All right, ladies and gents, are we ready to start? Let me know in the chat if we are ready to start on the Zoom chat, okay? Are we ready to start Zoom, Zoom folks? I need to see enough yeses there, okay? Enough talk with the sheeps and, and, and the flokes or whatever that is, okay? <laughs> All right, everybody's ready to start. Awesome, awesome, great stuff. I love it. It's a great day. We got some good energy here in the house. Let's take care of this. Um, and number one, guys, number one, first thing I want to see here is let us know where you're from. Where are you tuning in from? In the chat. Let's go. I need to see some, some places there. Let's see. Canada, Bulgaria, Florida, Cali, Oregon, Pakistan, Turkey. We had a couple of people from Nigeria. We keep growing the Nigerian crowd, which is awesome. Costa Rica, New York. Massachusetts, <laughs> North Carolina, Arizona. Come on, guys, keep them coming. Let's see, let's see those places. Come on, Brazil. Okay, Hong Kong. I love it. Philly, Virginia, Tunisia, India, Sri Lanka, South Africa. This is beautiful. Shanghai, United Arab Emirates, Malaysia, Jamaica, New York. Okay, so we got people all around, all around here. So um, now the second thing is I want to ask you guys where, well, not where, what do you think is moving the markets right now? What is your biggest concern in the market? Do you still think it's inflation or do you think it's more supply chains or do you think it's related to earnings or what, why, what do you think is moving the markets? Now, let me know what do you think is the biggest issue affecting the markets? Okay, sentiment, earning, supply chain, retail. <laughs> Employment. Okay, earnings, hyperinflation. Earning sensitivity, government policy, volatility. Okay, Fed, Fed, I like it. There's a, there's a lot of interesting ideas here. Chip shortage as well. So we're going to go over uh, some uh, some setups today. We're going to go over what we're doing here in the trading school. We're going to go over sectors that we're looking at, trade ideas, um, education uh, nuggets that we're going to be dropping today as well. And yes, correct, correct. Um, so I believe we have Mr. Mark Petrino in the house. Let me just go ahead and check in here. Is Mark in the house? Hey, I am. Hey, Mark. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, are you ready to start today? How, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good, man. Feeling how, was pretty your, good. how was your weekend? Um, 
Yeah, you know, it was, a, it was pretty cool. My daughter is a cheerleader on our high school football team, so we watched the game yesterday. They got mm-hmm. crushed, but, you know, at least the cheerleaders did a good job. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's going pretty well. But I'm glad to uh, be here to talk about the class. Yeah, absolutely. we got a lot of people here excited as well. Do you mind sharing your screen here just so we can get um, – get this thing going uh in the meantime and um yes make sure you guys have your audio settings correct on zoom we are going to be going over the presentation today here um that we mentioned prior with mark uh one second guys okay you got the screen now right mark yeah okay guys so um well for starters mark um you mind giving a, a brief introduction here of you know your role here as a chief educator in the training school and and what we will be going over today uh, with the folks here. Wait, hold on one second. I just want to make sure I see me. I don't see the screen. I see, okay, I see the screen and I see you as well. You see the chart. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. What do you want to talk about? I heard you asking the class. What do we think is driving the markets? Right. So l- let's first do uh, like a short introduction for everybody here that doesn't know your background, you know, where you've worked in Wall Street. So they know more or less, you know, who they're talking to pretty much. Yeah, I guess that's a good good place to get started. Um, I'm just so, I'm just excited. So. Um, so, um, well, my name is Mark Petrino and I am the a market technician and the head of education at the new Benzinga Trading School. I have a pretty long, about 25 year uh, background in the institutional trading world, meaning trading for big financial institutions, not retail trading. My first trading position was uh, with Mario Gabelli, who's a very well-known money manager. And I think now he manages, uh, I don't know, probably $50 billion. You can see him on CNBC a lot or some of the other stations. Uh, really a brilliant guy. So I had my first uh, trading gig there. I was actually a market maker. And then at the time, a lot of traders were moving over to what we call the buy side or the hedge fund world because the compensation was just better. So I ended up going over to SAC and worked directly for Stevie Cohen, who is one of the greatest money managers pretty much in the history of money management. He is the person that allegedly the show Billions is, is based on. Um, you know, I've, I've never seen Billions, but you'd be surprised how many times I get asked when I meet someone and they find out I work there. It's like, oh, is Billions for real? Um, so after after a short stint there, I went and I was the head trader at five different places, uh, sorry, three different places for eh, about five years each. And, you know, there was just a couple of things like my first one, I was in the city and then the partners had a East Coast, West Coast battle and a West Coast battle. The West Coast partners won. So they shut the New York office. So then I moved over to the startup hedge fund in, in Greenwich. And um, then eh, about five years after that, I went to another fund. So I decided to leave the the money management world about probably about four or five years ago because it's really it, it changed a lot since I started. Um, when I started, it was a, it was a fun job. You know, there's a lot of camaraderie, a lot of um, you know going out to dinners and, and, and games and so forth. But the computers pretty much took it over. A lot of people lost their jobs because of computers. Like when I first started back around in the late '90s, Goldman Sachs had. 600 what they call cash equity traders as far as i know now they have two and the only reason why they have two is because they legally they have to take a vacation every year um so they that's a law that's passed in investment banks so if someone's doing something crooked like there's there's time for it to come out they can't hide it so anyway my point is is you know the industry really changed one person can do the job that 600 people did 20 years ago so i decided i kind of wanted to get into education because i um you know I, i i take it I don't know. I don't know if personally is the right word, but it kind of really bothers me when I see these, you know, oh, you know, these like people like, oh, I'm going to teach you how to, you know, I, I took ten thousand dollars and turned it into five million dollars in thirteen weeks, or you know, I can teach you my method, and a lot of this stuff, as I'm sure a lot of the people listening probably realize, is garbage, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're here. Um, you know, so this isn't like a like a one hit wonder course, um, you know, like learn how to play the guitar in two hours. We fo- in the class, we focus on the real basics, and I can walk you through some of the trade ideas that we've recently have made money on, and I can even show you some of the stuff. Okay. That, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. We'll go over a lot of a lot of things here. Um, so that's good to hear. So that basically, you've you've been 
trading with Steve under you know Steve Cohen and Mario Gibelli, legendary investors, uh, well known on Wall Street. And you have a passion for education, and, and you know the trading school really seems to to, to fit in there, um, you know, with everything. So that that's a, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, um, and one of the things about the trading school is that, like, I'm not teaching the students like my method or whatever. Like, I have some secret method. I'm teaching them how to, or at least my goal is, is to teach them how to develop their own styles, what fits their personality by you know using various indicators and teaching them yeah. how to use the tools. And, you know, some people are day traders and they apply the stuff that we're talking about to the day, day trading. Some people are long-term investors. Right. So it isn't a one, you know, it isn't a like, Oh, you know, yeah, one size fits I'm all. I'm going to show yeah. you how to be a genius trader type class. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, well, let's just kick it here with a quick question here, Mark. What is your take? I could, because recently, I mean, I think it was yesterday or today, the infrastructure bill was passed. So a lot of people are obviously trying to trade that news. Is there, would you say that there's a, a way to trade that or any way that you might already be in that trade um, with the trading school members right now with that particular news that just broke during the weekend? Well, I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll have to see on Monday, obviously, and we have talked about it, but in a lot of ways, I think it almost is a wash, right? Because they had this huge bill that they were talking about. And then there was also going to be these, you know, really big tax increases. So now it's it's a smaller bill, but the tax increases will be less. So it's almost like it's been kind of a kind of a wash. And I think that could be one of the reasons for the recent um, you know, the recent strength in the market is because what's the big problem that everyone's talking about now is inflation. Well, this bill, $3 trillion or whatever it was, was extremely inflationary, right? Assuming they passed it. The fact that it got paired back or, you know, that, that takes some of, some of the inflation out of the equation for some investors. So that could be one of the reasons why the market was strong, but who knows, maybe, maybe a lot of people thought it would just be dead on arrival, but now they know it's still going to be a billion. Uh, so that's in the short term. In the long term, obviously, the country needs infrastructure. A lot of these roads are falling apart and everything. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's, it's still kind of too early to tell, but it's all kind of focused around inflation, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So we're definitely, and I mean, energy would be, you know, somewhat in a beneficiary there in that, in that news, do you think? You think yeah. Energy? Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, oil something that we watch a lot and that's you know it's been taking a break but this is the oil chart that i'm just bringing up here this is the price per barrel of oil and we could talk about how um we talked about this trade back in august but just to show you oil now so you know we've had this sell off but now it's getting back in gear and when something makes a move this big it's not uncommon to see some kind of profit taking or consolidation and I think mm -hmm. that's just what we saw here. I think oil will probably get back in the gear. But, you know, we at the class here, we don't guess. We just watch and we let the market tell us what to do. I don't want to say, well, I think oil is going to 100. Mm -hmm. Because if 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 tomorrow we come into the office and we see, oh, well, oil is trading down again. You know, I, like we, we don't have to, we don't get married to an idea, so to speak. We want to remain flexible. And if oil does get down to around here, there's probably a good chance it bounces because this level was important res uh, resistance back here. Mm. And in the markets, levels that were resistance can convert into support. Um, right. Matter of fact, I'm going to just bring up Bitcoin because I was just looking at this before, and I think the chart tells it, just the chart of Bitcoin can just give this the people listening now some of the um so this is a possible setup or possible a well possible trade. This, this is just an edu a brief educational explanation and then we can look at it um as a potential trade but it, it to me it looks like it's pretty neutral but i just wanted to point out that when one of the things that i teach in the class is that certain levels in the market are more important than others but this is one of the main things that trader needs traders need to know some price levels are really important some price le levels aren't sometimes we know why sometimes we don't most of the time we don't 
But let's look at this price level here. Now, this is Bitcoin. I'll get rid of that. So this is Bitcoin going back to April. So look what happened when Bitcoin got up to here, around 40,800. It hit resistance. So it went down, you know, rallied back. What happened when it dropped back to this level again? Well, this time it was support. So we see here an example of a level that is important. We can also see what is a common and important dynamic in the market that resistance can convert into support. How does this happen? The traditional reason is remorseful sellers, right? People sold Bitcoin here. They thought they did a great job when it went lower. But then when it goes higher, they regret their decision and they say, you know what? I made a mistake. I want to buy it back. But I'm only going to do so if I can buy it for the same price I sold it. at. So they place their buy orders at the same level they sold at. If there are enough of these orders, it creates a support level like we see here. So that's a principle of one, an important level, but two, resistance becoming support. Now we have the opposite example up here around 48, call it 48,600. We have support becomes resistance. Again, we have an important level. So how does support become resistance? Well, it's the opposite. It's not seller's remorse. It's buyer's remorse. People that bought here thought they did a great job when it rallied, but after it fell back through the level, some of them say, yeah, darn, I made a mistake. I want to sell it, but I don't want to lose money. So if it gets back to the same level that I bought it at, I'm going to sell it. As a result, there's a lot of sell orders placed at the level that was support that forms resistance. Now, of course, it's brought, broken through that and gone up higher, but it just mm -hmm. is a good illustration of how support can turn into resistance, resistance can turn into support. And there are certain levels that are more important than others. For example, where did the Bitcoin most recent rally stall out? Same level that it did back in April. And this is something that you went over. Um, I don't know if you mentioned that um, being a CMT for as a charter market technician. Yeah, I, I've been one for, gosh, about 20 years. Um, it's uh, it's um, When I took the CMT, I think you, you had to do it in three years. I think now it's a year and a half. But there's three parts to the test. And uh, it's kind of based on the CFA. So it's a pretty cool thing. If people are really into charting, I would suggest you look into it. Okay. Uh, Christopher's asking a quick question here. How many touches do you use to indicate support or resistance? Meaning with, with that line? I, you know, I, I don't think there really is a, a right example or a right answer. I and mean, you have to remember chart reading is ultimately subjective. It's what we see, what we see. I mean, here it was just, you know, one or two, some here it was just, you know, a spike. Some, sometimes we see support or resistance that lasts a long time. So it's really more about understanding what support and resistance is, as opposed to just saying, well, if it touches it three times, it's support, or if it touches it five times, it's right. support. And I know it says that in some of the textbooks, but right. we just have to understand what this is. There's so many buyers at this level that all this, all of these supply or selling gets absorbed, right? So here, sellers need to pay low, or sellers need to sell lower prices. They'd like to sell here but they have to push a lower because there's no buyers around or there's not a lot of buyers around mm -hmm. when it gets down to the support level, there's enough demand for it or buyers that they absorb all of the supply. The sellers can sell as much as they want to and it stops going down. They don't need to pay lower or offer at lower prices. So we see that we, we have a support level here. I mean, I, I would think one thing to say is that the longer something's at a support level or is a level, probably the more important that it is, but it's just, you know, it's not an exact science. It's just something that comes with feel, right. Or, or a little bit of experience. Right. Right. And just to give you everybody here, a quick update here. Um, the futures are all up and it looks like the biggest gainer is going to be the Dow obviously on that infrastructure bill. So, all right, good, good take there on Bitcoin, Mark. Now, well, what are you guys looking at in right now in the trading school? I know you had class on Friday. Um, what's the class on Monday going to be over? And, and what are you guys looking at in the actual trading school as far as possible setups? Um, what's going on there with you guys in the school? Well, we've had, um, I mean, we've pretty much, pretty much every trade we've talked about since the class started, I think, has worked out. Uh, so this week we closed out, we closed out, um, 
our Carnival Corp. All right, so we bought Carnival Corp. The, you know, our Carnival um, Carnival Cruise Lines. I'm used to calling it. But um, so anyway, one of the and this is a, a way we do this in class. I'm not just up there showing ideas. A lot of the students will say, "Hey, is this a downtrend line, or is this support?" Or is, you know, is this oversold or overbought? So one of the students brought us, brought this to the class's attention and said, you know, it looks like Carnival has a really clear downtrend break. And when the stock is in a downtrend, the bearers are in charge. But what happens when it stops going down? You have this, the price stays the same and therefore it moves sideways on the chart. Then you cross that line. That shows the bulls might be about to take over. So this Downtrend line is a graphical illustration of the supply and demand dynamics. And when it gets broken or crossed, we get a signal or, well, it's a sign that the bulls might be taking over. So that was the one thing that we looked at. Another thing we looked at is this particular um, oscillator, which we see on the bottom half of the chart. It's called a Fisher transform oscillator. And as you can see, it's given very good buy and sell signals on the chart. So students that are more mathematical like to have things like this because there's no there's no subjectivity in it. This line is derived from a mathematical equation, which I'm not sure what it is. But anyway, you can see we've had good and buy good buy and sell signals. So we got the buy signal here, which turned out to be pretty much right at the bottom and at the same time that we got it here. So this was a buy. And we were going to pretty much take it up to where we got a reversal or, or something told us to reverse it. But then we got this news out on Friday, um, which was good. So it rallied and students, whoever bought it, sold it. And a lot of the students um, play options. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of them actually. So th this is a, this is one of the, one of the trades you guys took last week, pretty much. Yeah, I think we got into it on um, we got into it on the prior Friday, and then we sold it. Yeah, all right. So yeah, so this would have been Friday here. So last Friday, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we sold it on Friday. So you know, this one happened to work out really good for us. It was a nice move in five days, especially if you're an option trader. So people, you know, probably doubled or tripled their money or even more. Right. So basically what, what we're doing here in the trading school is that we're showing people how to find these opportunities, right? So how, how some, someone is asking how to find, uh, well, I mean, you're trading for, for income, of course, right? You're not trading to lose money. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're trading here to be profitable. So that's what we're doing in the trading school. We're finding these opportunities. We're finding these trade ideas that are vetted by Mark, his 20 something years of experience, not just in Wall Street with, you know, Jabelli and Cohen, legendary titans, but also with the CMT experience, being able to read charts properly and the actual flow, the equilibrium behind the charts, which ultimately it doesn't matter what you're trading, options, crypto, um, just stock. If you can't read a chart, you're going to lose money, period. So um, uh, Richard, Richard's asking, yeah, Richard, I'm going to drop the link there for the trading school, um, but we're going, to, we're going to keep on here with the education. We might go over a little bit um, in a little bit more. No, the CMT is, is, is not, that's not something, the CMT is, is a, a professional uh, license. Um, so, so yeah, let's go ahead, Mark. Uh, let's continue here with the education. Great, great trade here, by the way, for the members that, that banked on that. Yeah, we also um, just closed out a, a pretty, well, actually, let's just go back to this. So this is common sense here. We see a downtrend line break and we have that indicator crossover here. So, you know, this isn't a super secret method or or something like that. I mean, this, these are just common sense things that we find on pretty much any trading software that's out there. It's in the it's in BZ Pro and in the charts in there. <clears throat> so common sense and logic. The same thing let us make a nice profit on Twilio, All right? So one of the students brought this to our, our my attention or the class's attention. That's one of the things I really like about this is that the class gets really involved. Some of the students are like forming study groups together and, and, and so forth. Um, 
because I'm not just there lecturing. Like I want, I don't want to have just tell people what to do. I want them to learn to do it for themselves. And the way they do that is I'll say, well, instead of me saying, well, here's a, here's a downtrend that's about to break. I'll ask the students, well, let's see some downtrends that are about to break and they'll upload their charts. And that's where we got these ideas. And I believe that's where we got this one. Let me just make this chart. Um, you paint below because this volume here is important. A lot of times I don't really pay attention to volume unless we get something that's really big like we got here. So here is why we were able to make a quick logical profit on this. Again, we're not doing anything super secret or ultra, really ultra complicated. We had some kind of news where this thing got sold off, right? And in doing so, it got to a level that was support in the past. All right, we can see that back in May when it fell to around 283, it found support. Well, sometimes levels that are support can stay in, intact for a long time. So after this big drop, that's where it found support again. At the same time, we had a massive amount of volume here. This is volume over 20, like 22 million shares traded. And it averages like one or 2 million shares on an average day. So that tells us that the people that sold or throwing in the towel, we call this a capitulation. Basically what happens is say you're some hedge fund trader and you have 100,000 shares to sell. Well, you wanna get a better price, you sell 10,000, you wait for it to come back, but it keeps going lower, you sell some more, you know, maybe you sold 30,000, then finally you say, you know what, I can't take this anymore. You just tell your broker, just go get rid of it, just go sell it all. So as a result of that, you get these big volume spikes. But is what the happens- famous Twilio trade? Yeah, this is the, yeah. So this is part of the Twilio. We had three things that told us to get into it. It had found support. Mm -hmm. We had capitulation volume, and it was really oversold. And you can see this on the RSI indicator down here. Right. So capitulation means all the sellers are basically thrown in their towel. So when buyers re-enter the market, there's no stock around current price levels. They have to bid higher prices. Someone mm -hmm. might come into the market and say, "All right, well, I'll, I'll pay two ninety for your shares," and there might not be any sellers that are willing to sell at that low. They might be sellers that say, you know, 303. So they have to pay higher prices. That is by definition what is what a stock market rally is. Buyers paying higher prices because there's not enough shares at the current level for them to buy. So we had the capitulation volume. We had a, a former support level reached. We were oversold. So that was our, that was our, that's why we got in. I, we got in right here on the 29th, I believe. So mm -hmm. this week it hit our sell target. Remember how we talked about how levels that were support can become resistance? So this so, was an entry and an, so you put an entry and exit there for the members uh, for yeah, that trade. Uh -huh. Okay, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, that's yeah nice. we we um you know we all we all do this together. Some people buy the stock, some people don't buy it, some people buy the calls. Um I, I'm not I'm not personally buying it. Because I don't want to have a conflict of interest with the students, but the students will tell us, you know, oh, I bought these options, I bought these calls. Um, so why did we know, or why did we pick this level as our price target around three thirteen? Because it was support. Remember what we talked about: buyer's remorse. Mm -hmm. People bought it here, thought they made a good decision when it rallied, but after it fell through their level, a lot of these buyers become remorseful and they say, "I made a mistake. I want to get out of this." So they try to sell the stock at the same price they bought it at so they can get out without a loss. So we had three conditions for entry. We had this found support mm -hmm. at a previous support level. We had capitulation volume and we had oversold conditions. The stock got up to our price target, which was here, which we said we're going to have our price target here because it's a former support level. And this one worked out for us too. So this is another trade that we were in just, just, just about a week. Right. Yeah. I, I do remember that because I actually go in the, in the morning before we start here, before we open, you know, open shop. Um, I, the classes are pretty early at seven in the morning. So I'll always get in there. You know, there's always people talking about trade ideas and I always check in and tune in, but um, we're getting some questions here about the trading school. So I'm just going to go over this really quick, Mark. Let okay. me just take the screen here. Sure. Um, Paul. Yes. Pro does come with the trading school so if you get the trading school you get benzinga pro so 
Let me know if you guys can see this. Can you see that mark there on, on my screen? Uh, marks out. Um, let me know, guys, in the chat if you can see this. This is my pro, right? Benzinga Pro, which is included in the trading school. And this is the actual trading school. So this is the homepage. Whenever you click the homepage, you have all the you know prior classes. It just gives you like a like an overview there of what's going on. You click on live class, it takes it to the actual live class. Um, so as you can see here, you have the chart, you have all of that. Basically, you know, this is the live stream video below is the chart. Here we'll have a chat. The chat will be open when we have the class, the actual class live. This is the video library. This is where you're going to find all the recordings, all the prior recordings when it comes to um, finding the classes, the prior classes. You'll see the titles here. These are the Q&A. So we have Q&A sessions in the class. These are the office hours. We have office hours included as well um, for you guys. And then this is where the action happens in the, in the chat rooms. We have a trading chat room here. This is the only place where you're posting trade ideas. As you can see, everybody's sharing ideas, education together. So this is where you're going to post trades, not in the live class. The live class is only for education education related questions to the actual session these are office hours here if you have any questions uh the files there where you can see here you can go over mark's trade ideas and anyone in particular here mark um okay i do like this one what's going on with this one mark with uh the health that's um, the healthcare fund xlv mm -hmm. we follow all the sectors that's one of the things we do to look for trading ideas and um okay okay clear break clear break right here from the downtrend um so i mean you can see all of these trade ideas that you're getting here from mark and the, these this is a a chat room that only mark can post so there's yeah, go no up a little bit and you could see um yeah there, there there's ba you're not going to see any noise in this chat room you're only going to see mark's trades if what you was keep that going mark? up i think you'll see um a new trade we just talked about getting into which one that one there um, and then we could talk about uh, Stanley Works is one that's out there. Which one, Mark? Well, uh, yeah, so there's the Carnival Cruise we just talked about. That's when we told people to get in. Uh, the, the, the one with the green lines there, the greenish one. Okay. There. Yeah, right. so we are, you know, we're, yeah, so that's the chart I just showed. Okay. But that's when it was our buy signal. Okay, so a lot of you guys might say, um, wow, you know, anybody can just, you know, do that and then say, look, here's the winner. But you're looking at here when Mark was charting this before this huge gap up to like 26. Okay, this this is an insane killer win on calls, guys, um, if you're doing that or in the stock. So uh, this is where the alert came out where Mark put the idea and, you know, the rest is history. Right. So. Uh, this is where you're going to get some, you know, Mark's trade ideas. And you're also going to get Benzinga Pro with the trading school. As you can see, you have your charts here. You have the only scanner open pre-market and after market. You have a lot of things here in Benzinga Pro, which is included. And we do have some sessions to help people, lessons uh, to help you with Pro. So all that is included for members. But now that we got out of the, now that we just went over that, so the questions can ease out, um, let's head back here with Mark Petrino. Uh, let's get back here to the uh, education folks. Whenever you're ready, Mark. All right. All right. So this was um, one of the things that we talked about. You see this XLV spider fund? Yep. Okay. So we saw this uptrend break. And here, we also caught this back here too, because when you, you see, here's the thing. We, we're not guessing. We're letting the market tell us what to do, right? You're never going to outthink the market. So this was in a downtrend. And I know a bunch of the students bought XLV down here. And we thought, well, you know, there's a good chance it's going to find support around the 125 level. Why? Because 125 was resistance. The people that sold here, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. The people that sold here, regretted doing so after it went higher and they say they want to buy it back but they don't want to pay a higher price so they placed their buy orders here so we had a feeling there would be support there we didn't want to guess though we waited for this downtrend line here to break or 
get crossed as a way to know to get into the trade. Because, you know, when something gets to support, it could keep going. So a bunch of the students wrote it up. And now this uptrend line has broken. So we have the opposite of what's going on here. So this could be the beginning of a new downtrend. And this is one of the things I was talking about, how I'm becoming in the market. I think we're due overdue for uh, for a correction. I don't know, you know, nothing major, but here's two reasons why. One is the two of the two biggest sectors in the market are technology and healthcare. So we can see here health healthcare has broken its uptrend, right? And the market is the sum of its parts. The S and P 500 is 11 sectors, and this is one of them: healthcare. The biggest sector is technology. We're going to look at XLK. That is the spider fund that follows technology. This tracks the technology sector. And it's extremely what we call overbought. Overbought means it is trading at an extreme above what would be its typical or usual trading range. I mean, look at how this has gone up so fast. Um, so this sector is overbought. That's going to draw sellers into the market and they could knock the price down a little bit. So you have the healthcare sector just broke its uptrends and the technology sector is overbought. That tells us that SPY could be about to uh, reverse. Now, if this does happen, where would we look for support? Probably right around this 453 level because it was resistance. So your resistance becomes support. Like resistance became support. So now resistance could become support. Markets don't go straight up. You know, they they do go down too. I know it's hard to... <laughs> it's hard to think that because it's been in this big rally for the last month. So this is um, one of the things that we uh, talk about in the class. We go through all the sectors to look for ideas. So we see technology is overbought. Um, the consumer discretionary sector was also, oh yeah, I mean, look at this. You know, things, things just don't, moves like that just really aren't sustainable. You know, there's, there's got to be some kind of give back at some point but we don't guess say you're thinking about shorting this or buying puts on it well here's what one thing you could do right you could just draw on your uptrend line and if it keeps going higher fine but once this uptrend line breaks it'll be a graphical industry indication that the price is not moving higher anymore and that could be time to get a trade on the short side if you buy puts or know people that shorted which <laughs> which short the stock but um yeah so those are um you know some of the things we talk about in the class we go through the different sectors so it isn't just like a teaching um a, a teaching um class about trading we're also talking about things that go on real time in the market like we spent a lot of time talking about when the fedex earnings came out and actually fedex is one of our open trade so we'll take a look at that oh yeah i i remember fedex pretty well i know <laughs> yeah so this is where the earnings came out because fedex is like a bellwether to the economy so just to clarify this is we're, we're showing you guys actual trades that we took in the trading school okay these these are these are trades that we've been following up on in case you this is your first time checking in yeah this is um this trade is open right now and it was a buy. All right, so let me just get rid of all this noise here. Something tells me that FedEx might pop with the infrastructure bill tomorrow. Well, you know, a lot of the things we do is, I, I know this is kind of contradictory to what I just said, but we focus more on the charts than, than the news. Mm -hmm. Because I think that in, in the news, there's just a lot of noise. But if I see something I think is important, we talk about it. Like we went through uh, when Tilray reported, because I was talking about how Tilray has um, so much goodwill, so much of their valuation is goodwill, it could be bad for the company. So Tilray is here. And I think they reported maybe here. And it's gone down since then. But some of the students are interested in fundamentals. So I said it's a bad thing to have too much goodwill 
at a company. And goodwill is like an intangible value as opposed to like a factory or something. So what happens was is these uh, cannabis companies went on these buying sprees. Then they bought all these companies, smaller companies, and they racked up all this goodwill. Goodwill is basically someone's opinion, right? Say, um, say there's a neighborhood where every house is five hundred thousand dollars, but the house you grew up in is there, and because you grew up there, you have sentimental value, and you want to go buy it. And the person that owns it says, "All right, well, I'll sell it to you for six hundred thousand dollars," and you say, "Okay." So that hundred thousand dollars is now goodwill of the value. If you said my house is worth six hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars for the structure and the land, and then the hundred thousand dollars is goodwill. It's an intangible. So goodwill is basically the opinion of a bunch of people sitting around a table deciding what it is. And if they um, overbuy or overpay for companies, that ends up going on to goodwill. So I forget the exact number, but Tilray had like like half of the value of the company was goodwill. So anyway, we talked about that. We talk a lot about um, the supply chain thing. Like now, this is a, a report that people have probably heard about. It's the ISM report on business. This, they release their numbers once a month. You might hear like the PMI. Yeah, yeah, and and this is just one of the many things that you're looking at um, that you go over with the students. Um, that basically helps them. So you're what you're saying here is that you're going over the economic numbers, the, the reports that are coming out, just like you used to do. Um, you know, when you were trading at the institutions, you're basically yeah, exactly like them. this is the type of stuff that the, like the traders look at at, at institutions, right? And you're sharing yeah. this with them. That's very nice of Mark to really sharing with you guys, like the actual you know, source of what, what we're looking at. Well, this is, ju- this is just something that's interested in the context of the supply chain issues and inflation and, you know, is inflation transitory? Is it not transitory? You know, blah, 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 blah. So this report comes out once a month and, you know, anyone can look at it. It's free. It's ismworld.org. And they, these, this organization, they, their members are all people in various parts of the manufacturing industry. So, you know, they, they, this is the number they report on TV. Uh, PMI came in at 60.8. Analysts were looking for, you know, whatever, 61 or, or 60. But if you go through this, it's pretty interesting. What are respondents saying? So this is um, this is the October number. So this is um, what people were saying like three weeks ago or a month ago. Global supply chain issues. Getting anything from China is near impossible. Extreme delays. Microchip and circuit breaker shortages continue and are expected to continue. Um, My prediction that 2022 will be very similar to 2021. Demand for our product remains strong, but we continue to struggle to secure enough raw material. You know, so when you start reading this and they tell you, well, I mean, it's already November, right? And they tell you, well, the supply chain is going to work itself out in January. You know, just by reading this stuff, people in the industry, does it really sound like it's going to happen in a month or two? Then you go down here and they talk about the various commodities they follow. So look at all the commodities that are up in price. Aluminum, phosphates, semiconductors, steel. All of these things are up in price from the month before. Look what's down in price. Just one thing, wood. So I don't know, what's there, 100 commodities here? 99 of them are up. And one is down. Commodities in short supply corrugated packing, electrical components, steel. So you don't need to be an uh, economist, but if you just look at this, this tells you, man, things are still pretty, pretty messed up out there. And this tells me that this whole supply chain thing is still has a way to go before it plays out. So, you know, anytime we see something that's really interesting or educational, uh, we talk about it. And, you know, this was one of them. I mean, the main focus of the class is technical analysis or what they call technical analysis and trading ideas. But, you know, I mean, if I'm going to talk to the class for two hours every morning, we could, we could cover a lot of different things. Yep, absolutely. And I just went ahead and ran a quick poll here, Zinger survey. Uh, would you like to trade and learn with Mark Petrino? 97% answers are yes. So guys, 
Um, Mark Petrino, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure he already knows this, but you know, he's been around the block. He's been trading with the biggest traders, investors. So um, feel free to join us in the trading school if you guys want to trade with us. We do this every single day. This is a sneak peek, like I said at the beginning, a sneak peek because it's just a fraction of what we go over. The ISM, that's only one of the reports that we are looking at, because right now it's one of the reports that we think has the most value in, in the market conditions. But one month, two months from today, we might be looking at something different. We might be looking at another type of report. And that's what it's about. Mark is sharing basically his entire experience, the sources that he's using. This is high level stuff, guys. You know, you're starting to learn to think like the 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 big fish right they move the markets and you want to be on the right side of the trade so i'll drop the link there for you guys if, you know for all you guys asking about it yeah so basically the let's talk a little bit about the structure of the classes that we have there are eight classes and then when we get to the eighth we start again at number one so it's not like you just take eight classes and then you know it's like you know sayonara and yeah and you go off on your yeah, own it's just the schedule that you have to follow per week to to go through the course basically yeah and and each class focuses on something that's really important mm -hmm. like the second class is levels so i was just talking about levels and we're back to this bitcoin here you know we talked about levels so that first lesson is how to figure out what levels are important understanding why a level that was resistance can become support our level that was support can become resistance. So we focus on that during the class, but then instead of looking at mm -hmm. textbooks, which have pictures that are always perfect because they're 2020 hindsight, we look into the actual market and we try to find real levels. Like for example, you know, a lot of the students are crypto traders. And yeah, when, we, we had a pe some people here um, talking about, <laughs> about that for sure. Yeah, so you know when this thing is rallying, people say, "Well, gee, where where is there a chance where this thing is going to find resistance?" And or you know, where is there at what level where the where will there be enough Bitcoin for sale that all the buyers can buy all they need to? They don't need to take the prices up anymore. Well, what do we do? Well, we look into the past. We look to around here, which is you know sixty three six hundred, call it. Well, guess what? I mean, it looked like it was going to get above it, but it was only for one day. Mm -hmm. So like, here's an example of how an important level is playing into the real time in the real right. market that the students are looking at. Because I've read pretty much every technical analysis book you can think of. And, you know, they're all right because they all are they're all 2020 hindsight. You know, this yeah. is like real time stuff. Yeah, every class, just for you guys to know, every class that we're, everything that Mark is showing you here, these are things we did live in the class with the students. And obviously you're, you know, you're just follow, we're following up here. There's a couple of questions here. I just want to ram through. Uh, Sabuj, when do the classes happen? So Monday to Friday, you have your meeting. The actual lessons are Monday to Thursday and Friday, you have a recap of the week. So uh, can people who work full-time fit in the schedule? Absolutely. We have people uh that have full-time jobs and i mean you see the chat there's people from all over the world you know they just make it fit into their schedule because it's you know it, it is um something that is you have to look into right obviously the trading education who are you gonna get this from right don't get it from some social media account don't go to wall street bets don't go to reddit if you're trying to find education you need to find the right educator um that's where mark petrino with his experience comes in so obviously, you know, we have people that live in Europe or, or Malaysia or all over the world. They make it fit on their schedule. The cool thing is that the classes are recorded so that we do upload them in case you miss them because X, Y, Z reason, it doesn't matter. Um, but we have all the recordings there um, in the actual portal. I think I went over that. Um, Angela is asking, we get a free laptop. Yes. So just to clarify, guys, um, the trading school is 70% off today until midnight. It includes Benzinga Pro. It includes a free complimentary laptop. It includes all of the sessions, you know, Monday to Friday, office hours. It includes all of the chat rooms that I showed you, the trading chat rooms, education chat rooms, Mark Trading Idea chat room. All of that is included. And everything else that we're going over as well, the replays, you get all of that. You need one-on-ones, group sessions. Uh, trade ideas, learn how to find trade ideas. 
so that you can become a successful trader. So all of it is included, but just for tonight, for today. Um, Valencia, yes, we're going to be sending you guys the free laptop, correct? How does the class schedule work? Yeah, so I think I went over that, Valencia. I'll, it's Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7.45 is the lecture. 7.45 to 9, you have the, the recap of the lecture. And this is ob obviously mixed up with Q&As and open market discussions. And then you have a break. Then you meet again at 12 at noon, Eastern. Everything is Eastern. And that's where you have a full open market discussion. If you have questions about the, about the lesson, you feel free as well to talk about them there. Um, and if you do need office hours, if you do need additional time to go over the material or maybe just clarify a point or two, uh, Mark does have office hours for that. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so my question is the stocks, okay? And this is for the year, okay, Arun? This is for the full year. We cover Bitcoin. We cover Ethereum. We cover stocks. There's a lot of option traders there because they, they know fundamentally that they need to understand the markets and the charts like you know just like you're able to to read a book you should be able to read a chart and understand it properly um what time okay so i went over the class jamie yes there is a laptop davy just went over the hours the classes the durations um i'm dropping the link here in the chat guys um i want us to focus on the education but I don't want you guys to feel ignored when you're asking questions about the chat room. So it's just a dilemma for me here, always. Um, but I think we're good now. I dropped the link on on, on all these, on the YouTube and the Zoom. So uh, let's get back at it with the FedEx trade, uh, Mark. All right, cool. Um, so this is uh, a trade that some of the students are long now, and I will explain to you why we got into it. So... FedEx had this big move lower after its earnings, right? This is what we call a gap down. And as you can see, it, it opened that this day, like at the same price it fell to here. So it found some support, but it was only for a day. But anyway, so support becomes resistance, right? So this was support. Now we fast forward. This is um, January of 21, so almost a year ago. Then we fast forward to um, here. And on this day, it looked like FedEx was going to break this resistance. Well, it did. So this is where I, I suggested that some of this, that the students buy. So every position we get into, we have a, what we call a stop out. Um, in other words, if it looks like it's gonna go, our, go against us, we want to sell and take a small loss as opposed to hoping that it goes higher remember hope is not a plan most traders get wiped out because they don't have plans they guess they see something in a chat room or you know they, they just they literally just guess they, they have no idea what they're doing they just buy something and hope it goes their way so we don't guess because when you guess or you don't have a plan your emotions get involved and emotions make you do dumb things not just in trading but in other areas of life as well. So anyway, so we we said, well, we would get stopped out if it closed below 35, 235. So it traded below 235, but it didn't spend much time there and the stock never closed below 235. So we were still in the trade and the past few days, it's, it's been going higher. Our, so our buy was around 237, 238. Now our sell target is up here around 250 because this level of support right before this sell-off came. So just think there's going to be a lot of people that bought the stock there that, are, that wish they didn't, that are going to try to sell to get out, but they don't want to take a loss. So they offer their shares at the same level that they bought them. So there's probably a good chance that if FedEx gets up here, there's going to be a lot of resistance and this little rally could stop. We also looked at this as a gap. All right. When something in the market moves really quickly through prices or doesn't even trade at them at all, it shows up on the chart as a gap. And there's an old saying on Wall Street, gaps tend to refill. And that's what we're seeing here. See, we gap down. 
and now the gap looks like it's refilling. Now, why would a gap refill? There's a logical explanation. Remember what I just said, when people buy and they become remorseful buyers, they try to sell at the same level they bought at. So this is why levels that were support can become resistance. When a stock gaps down or makes a really rapid move like this, like FedEx did here, as a matter of fact, they didn't even trade at these price levels. There was no one in here buying, right? You, you just don't, you're not going to have remorseful investors or re remorseful buyers because it moved through these levels so quickly. There just wasn't enough time for people to buy. So there's not going to be that many remorseful investors trying to sell their stock. So that means the buyers here now have to pay higher prices and this could um, drive it right back up. So that's another thing we look at. That's in our uh, patterns class. We talk about gaps. Yes. And someone's actually asking about uh, what are the classes? What are the lessons? So I'm going to go over them really quick and just know this is obviously a broad topic, but there's a lot of subtopics within each chapter, which is what we go through the entire course. So you have here introduction and philosophy to capital markets, levels, trends, momentum, investment psychology, market principles, analysis, and sentiment, investment strategies and trading systems so that you create your own trading system. So that's just a little bit of what you're going to be seeing. Yeah, this is another example of a gap. That I'm just showing this for um, educational purposes. Gap down gap up so a lot of times when you see a gap they tend to refill now this just kind of caught my eye here this this looks like a classic reversal day all right so let's take a look at this because there could be an idea here on the short side if you're a put buyer so some days you get these these one day reversals like a lot of times a uh, stock takes a, a long time to reverse but sometimes the reversal happens in a day Let's see if there's a lot of volume here because big volume on a single day is um, like we looked at that that volume on that stock um, on the Twilio. Remember, we saw the big volume trade. All right, so we had big volume on Friday on this, but nothing too nothing too crazy. But that doesn't matter. So what do we have here? The stock is going higher now. These horizontal rectangles are each a day's price action if it's blue it's a day where it closed higher if it's red it's a day where it closed lower so on the blue candles the bottom of the rectangle is the opening price and the top of the rectangle is the closing price on the red rectangles it's the opposite the top is the opening price and the bottom is the closing price so what do we see well the you know, there's a couple of days where the sellers were in charge, right? But the buyers pretty much controlled of this. So it's trending higher, it's trending higher, it's trending higher. Then <clears throat> on Friday, it opened up here at 62. So it looked like it was going to be a good day. It was, it opened up like about a dollar and a half higher than where it closed. Well, look what happened by the end of the day. The bears took over and pushed it lower. And even pushed it way down to where to lower than it has been over the past week. So this could tell us that the tide has turned here. The bulls were in control in the morning. Yeah, this is the one day chart. All right, so this is where it opened. This is just Friday. This is one day. So at the open, it looked like, wow, this is going to be up. Things look great. But slowly but surely over the course of the day, the bears pushed it lower. So this could be a case where we have a one day reversal. So this is definitely something that we're going to have to watch this week. But um, okay, so possible trade set. So possible possible trade setup depending on the on on what happens this coming week. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, we have a couple other things out there too, but right now, all right, so we talked about FedEx. 
Well, one one thing, Mark, um, I know there's a lot of of students that definitely, definitely have shown a lot of progress, right? Cypher is one of them. I know there's a lot of other guys out there and girls that that you've seen personally, you know, they, they've improved in how they're approaching the trading side of it, how they're managing the risk. Is this something that, I mean, obviously, you know, everybody has a different pace of learning, but would, would you say that in the trading school, if anybody has a question, there's no issue on getting an answer, right? Regardless of what it is for, if it's a question about trading or a question about, uh, about an entry or general questions that retail traders might have, yeah, I mean, we try to, I mean, we make a, a good effort to try to answer them all. Um, and if people don't ask during the class, then they can just post it in the office hours chat or the trading chat. And a lot of times, if it's a question that another student can answer, like if someone's really new and they want to know, like, how do I buy calls or what broker should I use? That's something that like, oh, like some of the other students could help them with. Yeah, yeah. So no, David, we don't talk about forex. Um, we're all about stocks, crypto, and there's all there's several option traders. But ultimately, the fundamentals what you're going to learn can help you with understanding charts. Well, we talk about forex though. Oh, you do. You do talk about forex. Yeah, we have some students that trade forex. I mean, the same principles that apply to these charts yeah. apply to that. Well, there you go, David. So we actually do have a community for you. And this is a community for all sorts of traders, right? It doesn't matter if you're an options trader. It doesn't matter if you're a crypto trader. It doesn't matter if you're just buying stock. It doesn't matter if you're doing Forex or, you know, commodities. Ultimately, what we are going over in the trading school is applicable to any asset category. As long as you're trading, as long as it's an asset that is tradable, everything you're learning here helps you with that, David. This is the trade I was thinking about that we, um, I think we just put this on, on maybe two or three days ago. Let me just, uh, yeah, I couldn't think of it, but, um, yeah, I just want to give a shout out here. Sorry to, uh, Suraya, our newest trading school member, Suraya. Welcome, welcome, welcome. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, so this is a trade that we are, we just got into. Right, because this stock is really oversold, and look what happened. It reached a level that was support before. So just like levels of resistance can become support and vice versa, a level that's important can last for a long time. So there's there's clear support around 61 back here. So the stock fell to it. We put a buy on it, I think probably on Wednesday. And then you know, we we had this big reversal day on Friday. So some of the students are already up. Um, I would think our short-term target for the traders is probably going to be somewhere around here, 67, because this is where the most recent low was. So we got in around um, like 61, 90, 62. And if it keeps going, we'll get out around 67. So this one looks like it's working out too. So this is another live trade so to speak just like uh just like um fedex is we also we i don't want to just say we got lucky because <laughs> we went in with good rules but some of the students got really lucky on that path and beyond but it's good to have good luck right so they say it's better to be better to be lucky than to be smart but anyway um so this some of the students brought or one of the students brought to the class's attention, this downtrend break here, right? See this trend line break? So like, oh, you know, maybe it's a good time to buy Bed Bath & Beyond. They've been watching, this particular student's been watching this ever since it sold off here, right? Waiting for a time to get back into it. So we had this big sell, but guess what? We never broke the downtrend. We're still trending lower. So here back on the first, it broke the downtrend. So a lot of the students got into this. We had a really good, strong second day. Then um, this news came out on Kroger th- that they were forming a partnership or something with Bed Bath Man. This is a really highly shorted stock. So in the morning, we have this huge short squeeze. Mm-hmm. So I told the students, you know, sell it at the open. It's it's higher than what our price target would have been. So where was the entry? Where, where was the entry for the students? 
uh, right down here um, when they broke this downtrend. Oh, for, man, those calls must have been juicy. Those calls, man. Yeah, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> these students are, are, are spoiled, man. You're, you're spoiling them, Mark. Too, too, too much. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's like I'm not guessing. I'm not telling people what to do. We're letting the markets tell us what to do. And that's why we're, you know, that's why so far it's been good. And I expect it to continue to be good because, you know, we don't guess. We're not like, um, you know, I'm not going to tell you, uh, we, you can learn how to turn a hundred dollars into a million dollars in three weeks. Right. You know, we're not champion traders. We're not ninja traders. We're <laughs> people that are students of the market that are looking for temporary dislocations in the equilibrium. So anyway, so this opens up here and this was really a big short squeeze, right? This stock was heavily shorted. So I told the students, you know, blow it out on the open because a lot of times these short squeezes reverse. And sure enough, it did. So, you know, this thing went from say 15 to, you know, they were selling around 25. So, I mean, we didn't know the news was going to come out, obviously. Um, so that kind of helped, but our price target was going to be, or was here the last level of support before it broke. There's a good chance that there's going to be resistance at this level. Or we thought there was a good chance there would be resistance at this level because a lot of the people that bought here regret their decision when it went lower. So when we had this news come out that just takes it above our of our target, it's like, all right, just sell. It's time to get out. So some of the students really uh, hooked up on Bed Bath & Beyond this week too. Yeah, and I remember this trade from a from a long. I mean, it wasn't not that long ago, but I remember you called this trade on BBW uh, way before it became a meme stock. Um, BBW, BBW, build a bear workshop. Oh and yeah, you remember this one? <laughs> all right, guys. Oh look, yeah. So I'm going to tell you guys. All right, um, I Mark provides trade ideas, and this is one of the trade ideas that you know I I picked up. And as you can see, everything is already written there from yeah, the time. Like I, I probably haven't looked at this chart since then. So yeah. all this stuff is still on there. And, this is and, um, November and December of last year. So this is before it became a meme stock. But ultimately, Mark's recommendation there was to buy it at about $4. Uh, right now, that that went all the way up to, I think, $20. Where is that now? Like about 16 Mark? Um, yeah, 16. $16. So from $4 to $16 um awesome trade i know there was this other insane trade let's see if you remember ddd do you remember that one you called it in at nine dollars and then it went all the way up to like 60. D what is it ddd three d's i'm showing you some of mark's og picks guys so this was one that you sent out in in uh, in one of the newsletters. I remember. Um, I, I mean, I you know I look at so many of these charts, I just forget. Um, at ten dollars, we got that entry, um, and obviously, you know, if you didn't sell it at sixty, man, like I don't know what to tell you. Um, but these are some of the Mark's trade ideas are based on on fundamentals, right? You know, the the the, the truth is in the charts, and I'm just showing you guys. These are some of Mark's you know trades from I would say like in the mid of this year or earlier at the beginning of the year, those are some of the old trades before we started the trading school. Um, but now you guys are getting those trade ideas in the trading school. I just want to emphasize that you're getting Mark's trade ideas in the trading school. Those, those are a couple that I remember. No, that's not a plug for Dennis, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I see why I recommended this build a bear workshop though. So yeah. We so, what's up with BBW? Give us the rundown here, like you would, like you were doing it when you put out the pick. Well, this is I. I don't pay attention to too many patterns. You know, everyone knows like the head and shoulders pattern. Um, that's probably the most famous one. But a lot of technicians or technical analysts um, aren't very good because they don't understand the fundamentals that they're supposed to be looking at. Like Rodrigo just talked about fundamentals. The ascending triangle pattern is, is a very tradable pattern and it's very easy to understand. So everything in a chart needs to be viewed through the prism of what is the supply and demand dynamics? What is this telling me about what is going on with the supply and demand dynamics? So this ascending triangle is a bullish pattern because look what happens. You have 
you know, pretend it's a football team. Like you could say this is your defensive line. They're holding, holding still. So the buyers, I mean, sorry, the sellers, they're at 465. And they're like, all right, well, you know, it went down. I don't care. I'm not that much of a rush to get rid of it. So I'm going to keep my sell order at 465. So it hits resistance there again, goes down. Some of these sellers say, hey, I don't care. I, I, I can be patient. I'll wait for it to come back and sell it. So comes back, they sell it, goes down again, same thing. Eh, whatever, you know, they can come to me. I'm not in a rush to sell it. At the same time, what does this line show? So this red horizontal line shows sellers are complacent. They held their ground. But what does this show? Well, the buyers are successively paying higher and higher prices. Here there were buyers paying 350. Here they were paying 390. Here they were paying you know, $4 and higher. So what does this chart show? What does an ascending triangle pattern show about the supply and demand dynamics in the market? It shows complacent sellers and aggressive buyers, right? Now, regardless of what market it is, stock market, crypto market, real estate market, any market, if you have aggressive buyers and you have complacent sellers, that sets the stage for a move higher. And sure enough, this thing ended up working out uh, pretty well. I still don't understand how a company can make money by having kids make teddy bears, but I guess that's a... Uh... I went to their store. I went to <laughs> one of their stores. And it's actually a fun experience building your own bear. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, a, it's definitely a one, once... I mean, you don't do that pretty often, you know? You're not like, let me go pick out a nice bear. Um, it's like a custom gift. It's kind of cute. Um, someone's asking if the classes are in AM, PM. They're in the AM, all right? So in the morning. But this is a great pick, Mark. And here's the thing. Obviously, some people like to trade options. Other people like to trade the stock. That's up to them. But you're just you're giving them the right setup, limiting their risk and maximizing their profit, which, I mean, they obviously taught you well in the institutions, obviously trading with Jabelli and Cohen. That is the discipline that, that you know these guys have. And I think that's going to be very valuable for retail traders because as a trader myself, I can tell you that I, I did struggle with, um, with many things that every other retail trader struggles like position sizing, buying at the top, buying too early, not being patient, not, look, not really understanding the charts and getting impatient. So um, I, I really think there's a lot of value here for retail traders. If, if for any reason what you're trying is not working, I'd give this a shot. It's a seven-day money-back guarantee, and you're trading with former hedge fund manager, Mark Petrino, uh, who managed over a billion dollars in, in his trading account. So, Well, I, I, I mean, I, don't, I didn't. It wasn't a billion, but... Uh, <laughs> with, with Cohen, yeah, and all yeah. these guys. So like We were trading um, a, lot of, a lot of money. I mean, my typical orders were, you know, buy a million shares of Intel, sell a million shares of Microsoft, like, you know, big orders. Man, so the other thing that I, that I want to uh, point out... Mark, in all of these institutions that he's traded, uh, he's traded different types of stocks. Like, for example, um, large caps, small caps, which as retail traders, we love to trade small caps. BBW was a small cap. Um, so you, you're and also, you know, managing pension funds and all that stuff. So you're getting somebody who's been in all sides of the coin and ultimately is just passionate, passionate about teaching you guys how to trade like professionals, basically. I've also seen bad markets too. I mean, frankly, you know, anyone who's only been trading for the last 10 years really doesn't know what a bad market is because, you know, we had the COVID crash, but it came right back. But I'm talking about like, you know, the great financial crisis where, you know, firms were going out of business or the internet bubble. Um, so, you know, my recommendation is if you're looking for someone to teach you how to do things, you want someone who's been through multiple different cycles because the rising tide uh, lifts all boats, right? So the last ten years, trading has been has been relatively easy because the market's been going one way. But you know, eventually it'll turn, and a lot of these people will end up getting wiped out. I mean, it always happens. It's, history is a guide, and it, it typically is. All right. So let's see. Um, so we look at the S and P five hundred. This is the S and P five hundred. This is usually what I do when I go in again in, in the morning. Um, 
you know, these days I'd be looking at oil. Be, well, we, were, we looked at it already because oil's, you know, a theme. Um, I look at the spy. This is the. Uh, this, you think it's extended? Overextended? Yeah, I think we're due for, uh, for, a, little pull due back. for a pullback. I think we're going to go down here. I could see some indecision at the top there. Like people are just not sure if they want to take it higher or not. Yeah, it's um, you know, it's uh, it's like gapping up. It's like uh, like uh, FOMO buying. You know, fear of missing out. Like you, you see gaps like this at like bottoms. You don't too often right. see them. At top. <laughs> right. But like I said, I mean, a big thing could have been the whole. You know the whole the infrastructure bill that you talked about was three trillion dollars. People perceive that to be very inflationary, which it would have been. Mm -hmm. um, when it looked like that was starting to fall apart, I think a bunch of investors thought, "All right, well, inflation isn't going to be as big of a concern as we thought before." So maybe that was what's driving this. But regardless, it's still overbought, and you know a lot of that is because of what's going on in the tech sector. So this these moves here. Wow. Yeah. So then we look at some of our bellwethers, like what's Microsoft doing? We always want to know what Microsoft and Apple are doing because those two companies together are 12% of the S&P 500. So they're, they're one eighth of the S&P 500. So Microsoft, we can see is, um, you know, it's a little bit overbought as well. Apple really is kind of neutral, it looks like. Um, what do you think about PayPal? Uh, was oh, all right. Yeah. So this is something good we can talk about good because, um, so some of the students were looking at this and they're like, you know, is it time to get in? It's gotten to this level that it was support before. See back here around uh, January, this is like two twenty eight. So what's the answer? You know, is it time to get in? I, I don't know. But you know who knows the market. The market knows. So let's draw our downtrend line in, which we did. And now, you know, if you're thinking that this is going to rebound, you wait. You just wait for it to break this downtrend line before you get in. If not, you're just guessing, and it could keep going lower. I don't. I don't know what the news is. Yeah, it's it's definitely all right. So let's get a feel. Let's get a feel for what people want. How how they're feeling. Give me a one in the chat if you think it's time to get in to PayPal. And give me a two if you think it's time to get out. One to get in in PayPal, two to get out. A two, couple ones there, several ones, random twos in between. Okay. <laughs> Keep them coming, guys. I need to get a good feel for this. I need to feel the temperature in the room. Okay. I don't know what three is. Three could be, <laughs> I don't know, we're going to wait to see if the downtrend line breaks first. And three is sideways, okay? PayPal has earnings this week. Yep, yep. I'm actually, I, I'm holding PayPal long term. Um, so I, I'm curious to see what you guys are thinking about. One, okay. So we're getting a lot of ones, a couple of twos. So I feel that people are a little bit on the fence about this. Uh, you either have extreme bullishness or you have... A couple caution, uh, cautioned folks. So, um, what what what's the deal here? What is? Does anybody know why PayPal is falling so hard? Depends on the news. All right, let me just pull it up here on my pro. Just gonna go to PayPal really quick. Okay. Yep. I see the news there. Right. Right. So, I mean, PayPal was a huge winner during the pandemic, uh, Mark. Seems like a lot of, and then you have, all right. So, okay. We went over PayPal. Okay. I get it. You guys want to get in, but they're, you're uncertain about the news. How about, let, let's go to Peloton. Let's go to Peloton, Mark. P-T-O-N. Peloton is this treadmill bike that has like a, they're, they're like software, but they're also not software. It's like a mix of both. They have a subscription-based model, but they also have the um, the bikes, and they lowered the prices by four hundred dollars. So the, the, they have huge supply. Um, but is the stock really worth fifty dollars? 
like from 160 to 50 do you think so in what is your take on mark on peloton um i mean i i wouldn't touch it here i would wait <laughs> i mean <laughs> i mean it looks like you can keep going but again that's the thing it's like you know if i just said all right well i don't see any reason to think that it will turn yet and part of that is by just the action on friday right things that tend to like when bad news comes out if it's overblown the stock will open down and then during the course of the day it'll recover somewhat if i look at the one day chart from friday on peloton this is just one day whoops okay i see what happened all right it's it's cut all right so peloton was here and then it opened way down here right so this is yeah the earnings were were bad they give bad yeah. guidance they the huge but here's the thing. this is all right so it came back a little bit up to 61 but then it slowly trended lower over the course of the day right so think about what happens this news comes out in the morning Mm -hmm. All the companies that are the investment funds that own it, they start doing the analysis. They look at the new numbers, they do their modeling. And if they think it's an over-exaggeration in the market, then they'll go in there and buy. Now, mm -hmm. what if they start looking at all their numbers and do their analysis and go through their models and say, hey, you know, this thing really is in, is in trouble. Well, then it'll happen. It'll sell off over the course of the day. So Peloton opened around... 57 it spiked up but 61 but then it just went yeah. lower so we didn't see any any reversion um in the uh on the course of the day so that's um we you'd wait to, for anything on this we'd wait for a, a more important level i mean this would fall great into the class of of levels really that we're looking at yeah i mean we would wait for um you know again we will wait like if you're thinking ah, eh, should i buy it should i not buy it you know it's That's down right. so much remember just because something's down big doesn't mean it can't keep going down you know a lot yeah. of times people say well a stock was at 10 and now it's at five so now it's got to be a good yeah. buy. well a stock that's at five can go to zero you know a stock that's at 100 can go to zero mm -hmm. so if i was considering playing this peloton i would just you know i'd have it on my radar screen and I would wait for some kind of reversion or reversal to okay. happen to tell me the selling is done. And I mean, on Friday, it just, it, it didn't happen. So okay. it's, it, there was no reversion. It sold over the, over the course of the day. So that's why when I look at it, I would still say, um, you know, like I wouldn't buy here. I, I would wait. Had it reversed, you know, like went down and then ended up closing higher than where it opened. Then you see that's a, that's a possible reversal going on. Okay, now let's do a full 180. Let's go into PLNT, Planet Fitness. This Planet Fitness, you already know what this is. If you don't know, this is like a real life gym that you actually go to and there's people there. Um, so th these charts seem to go in, in opposite ways here, right? Yeah, because this means people are, well, the perception is that people mm -hmm. are going to stop working out at home and go to the gym. So I, okay. I assume that's what's going on here. Right, right. Absolutely. That's what's going on there. So we're seeing the, the, the full on, you know, opposite of the reopening. Well, I mean, the reopening happened in real time, but, you know, Peloton, another, another stock there that got really got plummeted. You're seeing all these, you know, COVID winners become COVID losers now. Yeah, exactly. It's like the reverse mm -hmm. of what was going on before. Yeah. These but are just, these are just, you know, themes market themes it's it's one of the many market themes that are going on right now that we go over in the trading school we're looking at like mark said dislocations in the market we're, we're following trends uh, so that you're not surprised by these moves and you're actually able to catch them now everything i do want to make sure everybody knows that everything that we're going over here right these stocks and, and these setups um we're, we're just scratching the surface we follow up with all these trades in the chat room uh, in the trading school, if there's a, an actionable trade idea. So everything, these are all concepts that, you know, and trades that we'll be following up with. Yeah, I just wanted to point out here, or most, 
one of our most basic principles is just the levels, right? So we could see how um, Planet Fitness peaked at around $88 back in February of 20. And then look at February of 21, a year later, it peaked at the same level. And then again in April, it peaked at that same level. So going forward to now, we had this big move up, but on Friday we had a reversal. So if it keeps going lower, where would I expect there to be support? Well, right around 88, because it was resistance. So it would be an example of a level that was resistance converting into support, something that we talked about before. So, you know, you can look at it like almost any chart. You can see certain levels or some levels are more important than others. Uh, looking at this on Amazon, you want to see a really good example of something. Yeah, what's going on with Amazon? So it was like flat for a whole year. And then it just started making moves now, right? So, all right, yeah. So look at where it look look at where it's um. I like it there. I like it there. Look at where the where the rally ended on Friday. So mm-hmm. let's go back to our talk about important levels, right? So back here in September of 2020, Amazon peaks around 3530. All right. So now let's go to April of this year. The stock rallies, and that's right where it finds resistance. Same level that it did before. It sells off, goes higher, hits resistance again. Then it breaks through, and what happens? The level that was resistance turns into support. We see that here. Then the level that was support becomes resistance. So for whatever reason, who knows why, this 35, 30 level is important. And now look at where Amazon closed on Friday just under 3518. So this level was resistance again on Friday. So now going into Monday or Tuesday, if you're an Amazon owner or uh, looking for a trade, you may want to see if this level breaks and then it could make a quick move higher like it did back here. But again, you don't want to guess. You want to let the market tell you what to do because there's a chance that it doesn't break and it reverses again. But this is what I mean by like the real time concept of understanding the basics of like, say, levels that we're talking about here and how you can use this to profit from. Because you could say, ah, gee, Mark, you know, that's great. I believe you. Some levels are more prior than others, but how can I use that? Well, you can use it for having your price targets. Like say Amazon breaks out and you buy it here, right? Well, what could be a potential price target if you're a trader? Well, the last time it was at 3,700, there was resistance. So you could say, all right, well, I'm going to buy it here around 3,600 or sorry, 3,500, 3,550. And if it gets up to 3,700, I'm going to sell it. So by looking at a previous level, it can give you an idea for a price target. We can look at the same thing down here on the bottom, right? So Amazon doesn't get through this resistance or fails at it. This trader talk for it doesn't get through it. So it failed at this resistance, it's trending lower. Now you're now if you're thinking like, gee, Amazon is trending lower, where would be a good place for me to buy it? Well, look at the level that was support, 3190. What happens when Amazon dropped to that level? Found support right around like to within a dollar. And then it rallied. So by knowing where these levels are. It's going to help you with your targets. It's also going to help you with your order placement. Like, for example, say you were interested in buying Amazon, but you thought it was too expensive up here. And you said, Amazon's trending lower. If it gets to 3,100, I'm going to buy it. Well, guess what? It never got there. So you never would have bought it. And now it's up to 3,500 and you would have, you'd be kicking yourself saying, you know, how, why did I miss that? Well, you missed it because you didn't understand that there was support in the market above your where you wanted to buy it. Had you been aware of the support, you would have placed your order up around here, say 3,200. It's not as good as buying it at 3,100, but it's better than missing it altogether because you would still have had a nice profit. So this goes back to the theme of don't guess, let the market tell you what to do. I mean, that, that's in a nutshell, I think that's why the trades ideas that we've talked about are are successful because we're not guessing. This isn't like, you know, guessing or saying I have some secret system or, you know, you can have a Lamborghini from a hundred dollars. 
this is like, all right, well, what's going on in the market? I like this, this analogy of, of like a medieval market, right? Where all the merchants come from all around to buy and sell their goods and all the people come into the market to buy and sell. Now say there's like one path in and out of town and someone goes up and they're watching the, you know, the, the wagon trains come in or the wagons come in to bring in this stuff to the markets and say this person is, is shrewd and they say, Hmm, doesn't look like there's as many carrots as there should be. Typically there's 10 wagon loads of carrots, but now there's only two wagon loads of carrots. So what would happen? Well, that would tell that person, Hmm, there's going to be a shortage of carrots. That means carrots are, there's a good chance carrots prices are going to go higher. So they go back into the town before anyone else does or into the market and they quietly go around and they buy up all the carrots. Then after the market opens, people want to buy carrots. There's not enough of them around. They have to pay higher prices. This merchant turns around and he sells the carrots that he bought at lower prices to the people at higher prices. So this particular merchant might not know anything about growing carrots or they're not a farmer, but they understand supply and demand dynamics in the market. That's what we're doing, but we're just doing it in the stock market. We're not doing it in a medieval, um, you know, our medieval farmer's market or whatever you want to call it. So we let the market tell us what to do. We, we don't guess. I, 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 it's kind of a, a rolling joke I have with, with the students. Um, Cause I like went through all these trading classes, which I guess you would call our competition. And it's just like, you know, learn how to be a champion trader, like learn how to be a, a ninja trader, you know, learn how to be a market guru. <laughs> you know, that's not what we are here. Here we are students that just want to learn about the markets. We realize that what works for one person might, might not work for someone else. Like say you have like a really, you know, aggressive personality and you're, you know, you're really kind of like a, like, you know, whatever, you've got a lot of energy, you know, you really like the markets. Well, you might be a day trader or a scalper. That same personality, if it was a long-term buy and hold strategy, might not work because it's not conducive to that person, person's personality. Now, say you have another person who's just you know passive and mellow and chill, and they don't want to they don't want to stare at the markets every day, all day, every day. Well, that person might have what we call a swing strategy, where you hold a position maybe for a few days or a few weeks, or you know that person might be a long buy and hold investor. So there's no one size fits all. You have to do what is right for your personality. I mean, today's, you know, football's on, right? If you made Tom Brady a, a, a linebacker, he probably wouldn't do that good of a job, but he's a great quarterback, obviously. So you got to do what fits your personality. This is a great segment, uh, Mark, because uh, as a retail trader myself, that's something that I struggled with. It was, let me try OTC stocks. Let me try options. Let me try this. Let me try crypt. You're all over the place, and and you're you're not the, the most important thing would be to find out what kind of trader fits your style and ask yourself: Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable losing fifty percent of your trade if you can make fifty percent of your of of gain? So asking yourself those questions before you find yourself in those situations, you know, when you're already down fifty percent or something like that. Yeah, like some traders are, are more aggressive, right? Um, so let's just look at this Amazon here. Let's just put in this downtrend line from when, this, when we were back here. Well, an aggressive trader might say, well, we're in a downtrend and we've reached a previous support level. So I'm just going to buy it here. Uh, someone who's more conservative might say, well, I want to get, I need more confidence. I need more conviction. I'm not going to buy it until this trend line breaks. So they would buy it up here. So the, the aggressive trader would buy it around 31, you know, 90, whereas the less aggressive trader would buy it around 32, 63. But is, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just what fits your personality. So someone who's more passive, they're going to, they're going to need more indications or more conviction. Someone who's really aggressive, well, just the fact that it got, to a previous level might be an, enough. Some people, you know, might be okay with they lose 10% of their money on a trade. Other people might want to keep that to not losing more than 5% on a trade. So, you know, when you see these classes where it's like, someone's like, well, I can teach you my style or you can pay money and watch me trade and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if people can are successful at that, then that's great. But I just think that you have to do 
what fits you. And if you, if you're doing something that's counter, um, I don't know if counter to is the right word, but if you're doing something that's counter to your personality, the odds are you're going to have really bad results. I mean, I can never be um, a fund what we call a fundamental manager, right? These are the people that are your traditional buy and hold. They read a company's earning statements, balance sheets, and you know they um, they figure out if something's undervalued. You know, like Mario Gabelli is the classic uh, um, you know growth investor. That's how he got really you know famous and and and, and rich and started out by doing that. Like. I could never do that. That would bore the heck out of me. I can't stand reading, you know, in income statements. I mean, I know how to. Um, I've done it before. I've I've been in an analyst role where I analyzed companies and listened to earnings statements or listened to earnings calls and read earnings statements. But it really just bores the hell out of me, man. I, I can never. I would never be a good. That would not be a good fit for my investing style. My style is more. You know, I'm, when I do trade, I'm looking for. Um, yeah, you know, things that maybe play out. Like people say, like, how do you know what time frame to use? Well, sometimes you let the market the market tells you. If you buy it here, right, and you say, well, if it if Amazon gets up to thirty five thirty, that's where I'm going to sell it because I know that's an important level. Mm -hmm. Well, if it got to it here, you would have sold it on October nineteenth. Got to it on November fifth, so you sold it then. If it you know didn't get there and it got up to there on November seventeenth, you would have sold it then. So you're not going in there with a time frame saying like I'm going to hold it for one week or two weeks or three weeks. You're going in there saying here's where I sell it. If it gets there today, I'm going to sell it. If it gets there in a month, I'm going to sell it. So you let the market tell you what the time frame is. You have a plan. You have a strategy. And ultimately, if you lay out a plan, the other thing would be to actually follow the guidelines because there's a lot of a lot of uh, people. Let's say that you know they join the trading school as an example because they want to trade responsibly. They want to make smarter trades. And you know they're doing YOLO trades on the side, and and what I'm what I'm trying to emphasize here is that if you follow the strategy, if you follow the actual system that we are doing with Mark and his trades, with patience, right? Because if you you could have bought at resistance, Mark, thinking that it was going to continue to go higher instead of possibly waiting for a better entry, um, because of the impatience, right? Because of because of greed, put simply, right? Well, so. this is why most traders fail. It's because of emotions. Now, like I said, I've been doing this for 25 years, right? In my 25 years, Rodrigo, I have never seen a bad back test or a bad paper trading strategy. You know, people trade on paper. That means they come up with a system and they write down where they would have gotten in and gotten out. And, you know, it, it could be they find these systems that work out really good. It's the same thing with back testing. That just means you take a a method or a system and you use computers to go back in time saying, well, if I did it over this period, this is what my returns would be. Why are there, why do these things not work out? Well, because they don't have emotions. When you're trading on paper, you don't have emotions because you don't really care if you're making money or losing money. And if, you know, it, it makes it easy when you don't care if, because you're not going to be emotional. The thing that you need to learn to do if you want to be a successful trader is how to not eliminate your emotions because that's not possible because we're all humans, but how to understand like what is going on in your head and why do you want to sell it? Why, why do you want to um, um, buy? Why do you want to buy something? So a lot of people feel like they should always be in the markets and that leads to over trading. You know, it's okay to to take a day or a week to just be at like when in doubt, stay out. Like don't be in, it's okay to not be in the markets. Um, so the biggest problems people have is their investment psychology. And this is what we talk about in our lesson six investment psychology. And you could just see it everywhere. Like people are animals, right? And we have these evolutionary instincts that make us do irrational things. I'll give you a perfect example. How many times have you been driving and you, you know, you pull up to a toll booth and, you know, you're on a highway and like all the cars are going into like one, you know, toll booth there. And then you look around them and say like, wait a second, way up there, that toll booth that's empty. That's got a green light. Should I just go through that? So you blow by all the other cars and you go through that green light, right? Or you go through the toll booth with the green light and then you look in your rear view mirror and you see people are following you. But that's the 
human, um, the herd, herd bias in action. You know, you see the toll booth. So, man, everyone's going there. They must know what's going on. And you just instinctually are drawn to them. And this sounds like a kind of a funny example, but this is like the same, one of the main reasons why people lose money. It's because they think they make emotional reactions. If you were emotional, you would have gone on the back of that line and just waited for all the cars that were in front of you. If you were able to separate your emotions and think logically, you could have looked up ahead at the toll booth and said, hey, man, I could blow by all these cars and go right through this. So, you know, something you see an everyday example of um, is people that pe people like when their instincts or their emotions make them do decisions, they do illogical things like wait at the back of like a 50 car line when they could easily just go drive up around it. So we see things like this every day. And again, it sounds like it's, um, you know, a little silly, but the emotions are what make people fail. Like we, right. fear is a, is a probably a good emotion 20 years ago. Like if you were hunting a tiger or if mammoth was coming after you, it's like, oh, all right, you you become afraid and you, your adrenaline gets pumped up and you get a laser focus right? Mm -hmm. Great. That could have helped you back in prehistoric times. Now, if you buy a stock and it goes up, well, you have this fear like, oh, I'm going to lose my profit. Or if it goes down, you don't want to sell it because you have this fear you're going to lose money. And that fear is what makes people do dumb things. By having right. a plan and by being aware of this, it's, you know, you're 90% of the way there. Yeah. And I mean, part of being uh, emotional as a trader is, is part of being a new trader, right? When you are starting to trade, when you are very new to trading, it's obvious that you're going to be emotional about it because you don't have any experience to back on, right? Like, you know, when you have a big job at work, yeah, you know, you might get a little nervous, but you know that you can get the job done, right? You know how to, you follow the motions, right? But if you're new, you really are just emotionally trading, uh, the entire plan becomes emotional. You're only trading whatever is trending on, on, on any of these platforms. You don't really do any analysis on the charts. You don't really have a plan. And then if it doesn't go your way, you automatically start panicking and, and you know, you sell for a huge loss and, and you repeat the process, right? So this is the new traders, uh, a day in the life of a new trader, you could say. So this is basically giving you a plan, right? You follow a strategy you follow what we're doing and you learn from it, right? Because you want them to be able to do this on their own. Um, and actually that, that psychology class, Mark, that's, I would say it's my favorite class. I love psychology. It's, it gives you an insight into really what is going on in, in traders' minds from the institutional side as well, which is your, where you have your training and your background. But it's also great for retail traders to have that, um, that reminder, that session of, of to not let your emotions you know, control your PL, right? Follow a plan and a strategy instead of being an emotional trader, for sure. Yeah, yeah. If not, you're not going to win. And here's another thing that I think um, beginners make of this mistake. And actually, some people that have been doing it for a long time make this mistake. But those people might be doing it for a long time, but they're still not that good. Is you would have to understand this, right? And it's counterintuitive, but it's not about being right. It's about making money. The only thing that you should care about is how big your brokerage account is, all right? Let's, let's look back to this example of Amazon. Say you're waiting for this downtrend line to break before you buy it. Okay, great. You bought it here around 3260. Well, are you going to look back and say, man, if I bought it yesterday, I could have gotten a better price. If I bought it the day before, I could have gotten a better price. True, but we're not, we're not worried about being right. We are worried about making money. So it gets up here, you know, then you sell it. Well, you know, could you have bought it at a better price? Well, yeah, but you're never going to be, to always think you're going to get the best price is like a golfer who thinks that they're going to get a hole in one on every part of three. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but a good, a good golfer, what do they do? They get the ball close to the hole. They don't get it in the hole. I mean, sometimes they do, but that's very rare. Um, you know, Arnold Palmer, I think only had something like 12, hole in ones in his entire career and you know, one of the greatest golfers ever played you know, 50,000 rounds of golf. But anyway, the point is, is it's not about being right. If you follow your rules and you make money, then you've done a good job. That is your job. Your job is to follow your rules. Your job is not to always try to get the best price. Paul Tudor Jones is one of the um, 
another famous money manager who I've never worked for. I, I've actually played basketball with him at the Greenwich Y a few times, but um, but you know, he's another legendary money manager. And there's a quote I read by him where he says, "You're always going to sell stocks that go to infinity, and you're always going to buy stocks that go to zero." And of course, he's he's exaggerating and being a little bit hyperbolic, but you know, this is one of the greatest money managers ever telling you you're never going to be right. You know, it's, oh, it's always going to be wrong. You're, you're never going to be perfect. And, you know, that's just how it is. It's not, it's not trying to get the best price. It's watching your brokerage account and seeing, is it growing or is it not growing? That's the only, um, that's the only measurement for success in this game, right? I mean, it's like, think about a football game. Well, you could say, um, you know, you could say, well, you know, we had a better defense and, uh, you know, our quarterback was better and um, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? The only thing that matters is who's got more points on the board at the end of the game. Whoever has more points won, right? They didn't have every play was perfect, but, you know, they but they won. So I know this sounds a little counterintuitive, especially if someone is new at this, but it's about be it's about making money. Like playing golf is about getting a good score after 18 holes. It's not about birdieing every single hole because, you, you know, it's just not going to happen. So that's one thing that we talk about in the investment psychology class. And what's the definition of success? Well, it's sticking to your rules and not letting your emotions make you do dumb things. I mean, it's not just in trading. It's like in other areas of life, people let their emotions get the best of them. You know, someone loses their temper and gets into a fight or, you know, at a bar or whatever. I mean, you know, the emotional decisions really are never, um, <laughs> you know, never good ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the worst part is that as a retail, I mean, and look, I'm okay opening up about my experience as a trader, but like, you know, when you're starting and you really don't know much and, and there's so much unknown, um, there's this feeling that, you know, you feel that you, you, you can be that, 0.001% that beats the market without any prior education or any, and you're not even thinking about that at the moment. Cause you're just thinking about the money you can make when you just get in, you know? So, and that happened to a lot of people that just, that got into the COVID into the COVID trade, right? As soon as COVID happened and everything tanked, everybody was like, well, I need to get into this. It's a good opportunity, which is good. Right. But um, definitely nobody was thinking about the education, like in the gold rush, during when that happened, nobody was thinking about taking classes on how to mine gold, right? They just went at it. Um, and that's why it's important that, you know, you guys take it into consideration because there's a lot of mistakes that you can do as a retail trader that, you know, can, can cripple your account little by little if you're not careful. So having a plan, you know, investing in your education for trading is definitely something I'd consider um, if I would be able to start all over again, for sure. So that, I learn by actually going to a class and having an instructor who's done it in Wall Street with some of the biggest names instead of trying to figure it out on my own. That is the probably the only thing I would change when I'd say, Mark, when I started. Yeah, I mean, you gotta, it's like you do anything, right? You don't, um, you know, you, you want to take lessons from someone who's going to teach you. Like, for instance, you don't go take karate to hire the sensei to go kick someone's ass for it, right? You take karate so he can learn, he can teach you how to do it. Um, you know, you, you want a teacher that's going to, it's like, you don't just get in a plane and fly it without taking flying lessons. You don't just pick up a guitar and play like Jimi Hendrix without taking, uh, you know, guitar lessons. So, you know, trading, it's just like anything else that's important. You should spend some time learning about it. And it really doesn't you know, have to be that much. Like one of the things that we focus on in the class is, it doesn't need to be complicated. Um, just these examples I've showed you of just knowing where important levels are and understanding what trends are, you know, you could have made some some good trades, like that Twilio that we talked about or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the EHC that we just showed. You know, it's not, um, you know, we're not doing anything, you know, we're not doing Elliott Waves or Gantheri or Fibonacci. Fibonacci gamma squeeze. Or, we're not looking for gamma squeezes, none of that. Yeah, yeah, we're not. I, mean, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I'm sure at some point in my life I did gamma or deltas. It's just like think. Go back to the example I gave about the merchant and the market. I mean, it's it's simple. It's recognizing. Like here's here's what we do. Okay, we are looking for things that are in and out of equilibrium. 
I call what I do market equilibrium analysis. Like when I had my own firm, that's what I that's what my title was. So I don't like the term technical analyst. I just think it's too generic. But market equilibrium analyst, we are looking for things that are out of equilibrium because if they're out of equilibrium, they move. If they're in equilibrium, we don't care because we can't make money off something that's not moving. So we want to look for things that are overbought or oversold or at a level where there's more demand than there is supply or at a level where there is more supply than demand. That's when we get these moves, you know, and that's what allows us to make money. So it's real simple, man. We're just looking for stuff that's out of whack and trying to ride it to when it gets back into whack, I guess. Reversion to the mean is one of the, is one of the most common things that trading styles are based on. Something gets overbought, sellers come in and knock it lower. Something gets oversold, buyers come in and they, they, and they drive it higher. Right. And, and th this is, you know, it's very helpful for people that are, that are starting to trade, that are learning how to trade, because ultimately there's a couple of things here that really get lost in the, in, in the conversation. Like for example, um, who benefits from traders going into the market without any education, Goldman Sachs, all these big brokerages, um, that those are the companies that benefit from you blowing up your account and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So if you're going to do that, you know, you really, you, you could go ahead and might as well send them a check directly to Goldman Sachs, or, um, <laughs> you could, you could really try to get the upper hand in this because the markets were not meant for retail trading. We are just in it for the wave. We are just riding the waves that big money is pushing either way up or down. So as retail traders, we need to be able to spot that, spot those things. Um, and as a community, we do that pretty well with Mark's guidance, obviously, I'd say for sure. Um, okay, Scott. Yeah, Scott, I'll send you an email with the link. Um, yeah, Mark. And ultimately, the other thing, right? So yeah, Goldman Sachs and all these big brokerages benefit from, from, from new traders that don't know what they're doing. But then... You got to keep in mind that when you're trading stocks, you're buying, there's two people in the transaction. You are buying something and someone else is selling you something, right? So more experienced traders take advantage of new traders in that sense. So that's why we're trying to make a concerted effort here at Benzinga to educate retail traders. Even if you're just starting, um, we have people from all experience levels, right, Mark? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We have people that are just starting out and we have people that have been trading for for years that have done okay but they want to get better we have people that have been trading for a long time that just can't figure out why they can't make any money um so yeah we have all the, the only prerequisite to the class is that you want to learn this isn't um somewhere where you come and you say oh what's the trade idea of the day you know we like i talked about we come up with ideas when we come up with them together and maybe one day we don't come up with an idea maybe the next day we find five ideas it's all going to depend on how much the market is moving um so that's you know that's it the only prerequisite is i want people that want to learn and and frankly the people that are just starting out are almost better off because they don't need to unlearn anything right so um yeah we have all levels beginners like people that are you know just very first time getting in the market trading you know a hundred dollars two hundred dollars then we have students trading that are trading hundreds of thousands of dollars that are that are very well off um it's all levels everyone is welcome as long as you want to learn and also too it's not a mark what do you think of this what do you think of that what do you think of this what do you think of that because if you know if that's if that's all i did it would take me like 10 hours every day what i want to see is Mark, take a look at this chart. I think this is a support level. Do you, would you agree? So I try to encourage, um, you know, the students being active and I, I just don't want to drone onto them at all. I want them to, you know, be active and because that's how you really learn. I mean, you know, you can, um, it's like, I, I always use this example about boxing, right? It's like you could lift weights, you could run, you could work out on the heavy bag. You could think you're like in good shape, but until you actually get in the ring, you know, with someone else, you don't, you don't really know what boxing is all about. And it's the same thing here until you're like looking at the charts yourself and coming up with your own ideas and asking yourself about, 
you know, did I make a, this decision because I was an emotional or, you know, did I make this decision because I was uh, scared, you know, until you start doing that stuff, then, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's just not going to be as effective. You could just go read a book. Right. Right. And, and this is the value right there where you, 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 you get a new trader who, who really, I mean, is in danger of blowing up their account. It happened to me twice. So, I mean, that's what we're trying to avoid. You have no idea, Mark, how many calls I get. Like, you know, just when I'm talking with with folks on the phone, um, they talk to me about, you know, some of their trading experience and how they uh, blew up an account here or there. And we, it seems like retail traders, we all make like the same mistakes. It seems, it seems like it's always the same typical mistakes. And part of part of overcoming that is trading with a system, right? Having an education on, on trading from somebody that's been doing it for a while in Wall Street, right? Not just going to the Wall Street bets or Reddit and trying to get uh, like trade ideas there. You know, yeah, I mean, we you know if you know what you're, you know, if you know what you're doing, you should never get blown up because, yeah, I mean, of course, maybe a meteor hits, you know, Washington D.C. tomorrow and the markets crash or whatever. You can't avoid that, but you know, you should never risk more money than you would be comfortable with losing. And, you know, in other words, if you have ten thousand dollars, well, don't put all ten thousand dollars in the one stock. You know, maybe you put two hundred into a stock or five hundred into a stock, depending on your, um, you know, your personal what they call risk tolerances. But you should never have all your eggs in one basket. It might work out for you in the short run, but in the long run, it's not going to. So we need to. There are certain things we can control, and there are certain things that we can't control. Right? We can't control having losses every system in the history of mankind has had losses as be part of it the great traders the steve cohen's the mario gabelli's they make decisions that go against them but what can we control well we can control how much money we lose on a loser we can by knowing where our stop is going to be we can control that so that's one thing we can control we can't control if we're going to lose or not it's always going to happen but we can control how much money we're going to lose. And part of being really successful is never having the big blow up. Never, you know, it's like playing golf. If you just spend 18 holes trying to hit good shots, you're going to end up with a good score. But if you have a hole where you hit, go in the water or you're in the woods, well, you know, it's going to ruin your day. And it's the same thing with investing by worrying about the losers. We let the winners take care of themselves. And, what do we do with the losers? Well, we we get rid of them before things get too bad and the loss becomes too big. Yep, let's let's take a look at Ford. Let's see what what you can tell us here about Ford, Mark. Well, it's had a huge move higher. I think it's kind of running out of steam though. But again, you know, what do we do? Well, we put in our trend line so if you're along it you know you ride it you ride it up and then it could go up here you know it could keep going but if it is going to roll over one of the first places we'll see it would be when the stock trades on the other side of this trend line i mean i would expect some profit taking it's had a really big move mm -hmm. uh, you know i don't i'm not saying like for the long run it's not going to be good but you know there's there's just going to be some kind of reversion here like the same thing with tesla you know tesla's had this huge move and you know it's the same thing like you if you row this up and you you don't know where to sell it well you put in your trend line here so we'll just pay attention to this and i mean think about this just how the way it works right if it's going to start going down the price is going to cross this line so this would be an early signal that that's happening and this is why trend lines are so good to use they're like really Tesla. just a way to, to make it easier to visualize. It's a big winner, Tesla. I know that's one that uh, you've been covering for a while. Um, but yeah, it seems like you have a good knack for charts. I remember you wrote an article September 16th um, in the article where you where you pretty much, you know, somewhat called the top uh, on that overextension. Um, I don't know if you remember that article, but basically, yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like you have a good touch for charts. Um, and, and that's really the, the golden nugget for, for a trader, right? For a swing trader, for a day trader, being able to recognize these levels, recognize momentum, 
patterns, all of that. Yeah, well, I've been doing it for a long time, so, so I have a lot of experience. Yeah, that's definitely great because, you know, when you're a retail trader, you're starting, you know, sometimes you end up following the wrong people. You end up going to the wrong community. Um, that's something that I felt I experienced when I started. Uh, there, I, I didn't really feel there was much of a retail stronghold for retail traders until I kind of came across Benzinga where the focus is completely retail trading. And that's really, you know, where I feel that I, I can align myself with on helping retail traders, helping, you know, the average Joe not blow up their life savings account on trading some weirdo stock, you know? Yeah, we don't want we don't want to use the term blow up in our class ever, unless we're talking about preventing them. But yeah, we we, we want to avoid that. And we can. It's just a matter of having the rules and sticking to them. Right. And, and, and another, I mean, these are, all, we're giving you like little nuggets of information, little golden nuggets of, of, of education throughout this workshop. I know a lot of people have had a great time here. Um, it's been really good here, Mark. And um, yeah. So yeah. I got okay, cool. Yeah. I was going to say, I just, I got some uh, things I got to do. So I'm probably going to have to get going pretty soon. Yeah. So let's, let's do this. Um, would, is it, can, can we do a couple of tickers, Mark, and yeah. then just get some closing remarks from you? Sure. Okay. All right. So, um, tickers from the chat. Tickers from the chat. Do you want me to look at them, or do you want to call them? Um, I say let's let's grab some tickers from the chat. All right. Okay. Yeah. Give, give me some to. Uh, all right. We got Palantir, PLTR, or just a couple. Don't go crazy, guys. All right. That's enough. That's enough. Yeah, I was looking <laughs> at this, this morning. <laughs> Yeah, now you see, a lot of times I'll see something like this and I'll just say, you know, I don't see anything going on here. And I'm not trying to avoid the question, but when I'm looking at something, what I'm looking for is, do I think there's going to be a big move that's imminent? Like, is this thing about to move? Is it overbought? Is it overextended? When I see this, it's just, you know, it's, um, it's pretty neutral to me. It's just trading where it has been over the past week. I guess I would probably put in my trend line here, just something to keep an eye on if you're long it. You know, what would I be looking for for a potential price target? Well, what do we do? We look at our former resistance levels because if levels resistance, it tends to stay intact. So, you know, here's something you could do. It's as long as it's above this trend line, you just stay with it. But if it gets up to around here, that's when you consider selling it. And again, I'm just talking for the trading perspective. I'm not talking about if you like the company long term, you think it's going to be worth a hundred dollars a share. We have we have a short, you know, a shorter term focus in the class. So as a trader, that's what I would be looking at. This uptrend and this resistance. Okay, let's go ahead and look at, um, all right, we already did uh, that one. Let's go about uh, Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft looks like it's a little bit overextended as well. No, you know, nothing crazy. I mean, you know, again, I would be looking for, I, I mean, this is, just, you know, it's just, it's overextended. I think some, from a trading point of view, it's something that you want to just keep an eye on for a little bit of a reversion. Again, if you like this long term and you know it's in your kid's college account or something like that, uh, you know I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're a trader, it's really overbought, and you could just put in your little trend line like right here and just kind of watch that. And as long, whoops, and as long as it's above this line, you should be okay. But if it crosses it, then you get ready for a reversion or a sell-off. I mean, it could keep going all the way up here. You know, it could keep going all the way up here. But what we're doing is we're not guessing. We're waiting for the market to tell us when it's about to turn. Okay. All right. Let's go over EXPE. EXPE? Expedia. All right, so I see something here. Um, so I guess they must have some news, but 
what I see is a stock that is actually has moved up to a level that was resistance before it was 180 level. And that's probably why it stopped here on Friday. So I see a stock that's overbought and it's at a level that was resistance. All right. See back here and through here. So, I mean, I would be without knowing anything else about it, if there's any news coming out or earnings or anything like that. To me, this looks a little bit overdone and I would expect some profit taking just because of the fact that it's overbought. You can see that on this RSI indicator down here. See the last time it was, it was overbought here. It's not quite there yet because this move wasn't just one day, but with a few more days of data and put it into this indicator, it would show it. But yeah, so I see this and I'm thinking, all right, let's watch this thing for a reversion as, as a trader. You know, again, if you like it long term for an investment, don't do anything. But if you're a trader, I'd be waiting for this thing to reverse. Or conversely, you could be waiting to see if it breaks out. If it gets above this resistance and holds for a few days, then there's a good chance the uptrend continues. So when something gets to an important level, it's like they're at a fork in the road. You know, they could, it's either going to go one way or the other way. Probably is not going to spend a long period of time just trading right around this level. It's probably going to go up or down as opposed to sideways. Okay, and this is part of that reopening trade, of course. Um, yes, we already did Ford. Uh, let's go over Facebook, or should I say Feta, Meta, <laughs> Meta Cheese. <laughs> oh, Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg. Well, I don't, you know, it's not going to fool me. I know it's Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this, you know, neutral momentum. I see, uh, you know, it's a little bit of resistance here. I mean, I don't know if I was going to trade this. I'd probably wait for this one 342-ish level to break, get above there. We can see on Friday, it did. On Friday, the high got up to uh, 346, but it reversed and closed below closed below this level, right? I just want to make sure everyone sees this. So this level was resistance. It looked like it was going to close above it, but the bears came in and pushed it lower on Friday. If you look at the one-day chart, you can see what I mean. So it looked like it was going to go higher, but right around 1230, the bears came in and started knocking it back down. And this blue line here is that level I just showed. So if you're a day trader, I get this a lot. Day traders are like, how, how far back should I look at the chart? Well, if you're a day trader, you want to be aware of where the important levels are. So this blue line here is this blue line here, right? So, you, so this is each one of these candles is a day. This goes back to August. Each one of these candles is a minute. This is just a one day chart. But if you're a day trader, you're, you're gonna wanna know where this level was. Cause look, it was resistance, it was support, it was resistance. Um, so yeah, so that's an important level, 343-ish. And then you can put in your uptrend line if you want. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah that's definitely an interesting trade setup there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, all right, Mark. So, what are what uh, what are some closing remarks here on your end, and what you expect on the market? What you're going to be uh, looking at in the trading school for the upcoming weekend, and uh, for the you know for the for the prospect students here. Well, I mean, we're going to be following the inflation story, oil. Um, you know, I, like I said, I think spy is a little bit overbought. I think we'll be looking for a little bit of reversion. Yeah, I see SPY is a little bit overbought. So we're going to be looking for the reversion. We're going to be looking at our tech sector, which is overbought. So, uh, you know, I think there's two things that make this class different, Rodrigo. One is the instructor has a lot of experience, right, versus someone who, you know, started doing this for five years ago and they, they got lucky and now they think they're really good at it. And the other thing is just this real-time application to the markets. We actually focus on what's going on in the current day-to-day -day market as opposed to me pulling out a chart saying, say, you know, 
saying, oh, you know, last August, I said this was going to happen. And sure enough, it did. Uh, we do things in real time, just like we were talking about these particular names today. So when we watch that, XLK, yeah, look at that. I mean, that's a, it's hard for a stock to sustain a move like that. We're going to be going through the trades that we have out there. Like I talked about um, this one. And Compass Health. So we can see this thing has reversed. I think it still has some room to go. And then we'll just talk about whatever happens in the market, whatever is going on. But um, yeah, I think that uh, I think that's that's what I'm most proud about is that we have the real time application to the market because anyone could look at a book and say, hey, you know, it was eight months ago I said this was going to happen, and sure enough, it did. Well, we have real time things going on here. Yeah, absolutely, and that's a great value. I know. I remember calling the bottom on oil at sixty. All these other great plays uh, that I've been following up very closely, Mark. Well, uh, I'm going to stay here, uh, guys, answering some questions. I'm going to show you Pro, Benzinga Pro. We'll go over a couple names there just to show you how it works. Um, but yeah, Mark, definitely appreciate your time today and staying here with us. All right, cool. Thanks, everybody, for uh, checking us out. And hopefully you'll give the class a try. I think you'll be glad you did. All right, Mark. Thanks for being here with us. All right. It's on. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys can see that on the actual screen. Let me know if you can see that. The Benzinga Pro. Okay, I think you guys can see it now. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys the trading school really quick and we're gonna go over pro as well after. Let me just pull up the chat. Okay, and I think here. you guys can see it now. Okay, everybody can see it. Yes, no. Okay, so now yeah, you I'm can gonna see show it. you guys the trading school like, really like quick and we're gonna. There. Yeah, if you guys wanna, wanna know more from Mark, um, I'll leave the link for sure um, for the trading school. Uh, and what you're seeing right now is the actual chat room there where he's putting his trades. So those are all of Mark's uh, trade setups that we've put there. Uh, he's the only one that can post there. So, you, you know, there's no noise. You're basically just getting his trade ideas. And then you have a trading chat room. This is for everybody else, all the students, um, where everybody's posting their trade ideas. They're talking about the school and whatnot. Um, office hours, if you need any additional help on a on any lesson or anything like that. Um, this is the sidebar, it, sc it scrolls out so it, you know you have more space here. Um, mark trade ideas, so basically you have all the chat rooms that you can like want ever. Uh, then you have the homepage, this is where you have all of the lessons, you have all of the, you know, the Q and A's. Um, you also have uh, the these office hours. So you have office hours as well. If you need office hours for a lesson or whatever it is, they're recorded as well. So you could literally never go to class and just, you know, go off the recordings. And this is for all you guys that maybe have a nine to five or for some of you guys that maybe live, you know, somewhere uh, far away, you know, you'll be able to have all of the recordings there. Um, and so any questions about the trading school right now is the time. Okay. Right now is the time to ask. Okay. So is attending course feasible for those that work full time? Yeah, Valencia, there's a lot of uh, a lot of members that have a full-time nine to five it's pretty common it's normal it, it, it you know a lot of people do that to be honest so having the recordings there available is very helpful because you can watch them at any time and if you can rewind it and so forth and you know take down your questions make sure that you you know you you list your questions and you can follow up on that as well because you know we have a policy here no trader left behind and, and we do apply that to what we do here overall uh live games to the top great information thanks a lot i'm glad you guys enjoyed today's uh session it was very fun engaging um adam from youtube has a question how long do the live classes last like throughout the year yeah they're throughout the year they're rolling they don't stop it's not like you know we're, we're gonna stop in one year from when we start and then just give replays to everybody it's always going to be live because the education that we're doing we apply it to the current market 
So it, within the education that you'll be getting in these classes, you will have actionable trade ideas with full setups, full analysis that we're, because it's part of the education and that's why we do it with the current market. Now, like for example, if we would have done this course, if anybody did a course on trading on 2020 or like in a, a, a tuition, um, like school for trading, it, it wouldn't be as valid as, as it is today because the market's changed completely 100%. So everything that we're doing is updated to the current market, Adam. Um, and the actual, the actual uh, trading school you know, process is one year, but all the people that stay for the ongoing mentorship, for the ongoing education, because the upcoming market is not going to be like a prior one. So, so yeah, it's pretty much a full-on community of traders around the world. Some people trade options, some people tra trade stocks, crypto, forex. It doesn't matter. It, it, you know, ultimately, this is the foundation for, for retail traders. It's the foundation for, for anything that you're trading. It doesn't matter what it is, Adam. Um, you're welcome, fake account. Uh, Giuseppe, yeah, it's for a year. So it's a one-year uh, subscription with Mark Petrino with the trading school. And it also comes with Benzinga Pro. And I'm going to show you a couple things here in a minute. All right. Just got to plow through these questions here. Um, all right, back to the Zoom questions. Do you get immediate access to past lessons as well? Absolutely. Uh, Jennifer, all of you guys that joined today, today only, will be able to go over all of the prior lessons that we have available like from when we started. And I think it's about se September, end of September, beginning of October, around there. But all the classes are, are there for you to review. All of the Q&As, all of Mark's past trade ideas, everything that we showed you, like the trades on, I'm not sure if it was Carnival Cruise Lines uh, and then Twilio, all of these trades are there in the chat for you to see. You could have taken any of these trades at any point and banked on them, either with a call or, or buying the stock, whatever fits your style. Um, but we're giving you constant trade ideas with, with solid analysis on technicals, which, which is ultimately what, what is driving you know, the markets, right? We definitely look for important levels, important momentum, important trends. We look at a lot of things and we try to just give it to you all in one like package so that you don't have to be trying to do this all on your own. Um, so yes, and you also get immediate access to Benzinga Pro. So you get immediate access to everything once you join. Um, when do the classes start again? Well, we just opened the enrollment today, Suzanne. So if you want to join in today, more than welcome to have you here. Be part of the family, of course. Um, Valencia, send me, send Rodrigo, send me an email. Okay, send, send, I have an email here that I'm going to post. Just make sure you send an email there with that, with your question there. How long could it take for the eight sessions if you're grinding through it? I mean, we're going through the sessions day by day. So, and, and there's obviously, since we're going over the current market, we have to apply the lesson. We have to apply the concept to the current market. And we don't know what the market, how the charts are going to look like two months from now. So we do it with the live market for that reason. So how long it could, I mean, it takes a full year, uh, Christopher, but. Um, the, you're still allowed to, to retake the courses. You, it's not like once you take it, you're not allowed to take it again. Like most places, um, you're actually allowed to take them as many times as you want with full support every single time. So it's, this is, this is p the definition of, of handholding, like from the zero yard line to the touchdown. Okay. We're taking you guys to the end zone, holding your hand, giving you everything that you need all of the tools, answering your questions, going over the lessons, applying the education to your trades, giving you feedback on all that stuff. So it's a full community. It's, and, and really, until you experience it, um, you're, you're missing out, quite honestly. You are. Joe, send an email to newsletters at benzinga.com. Um, Dennis, yes, I'm going to put the link again here one more time. I think I put it in there. Um, it, it is the link. It does have the 70% off that expires at midnight. This does include Benzinga Pro, the laptop, the, the, the full tuition, full education, 
all semesters covered for the full year. Uh, so one year from when you sign up and the classes are rolling. So we're not, we're not stopping. Uh, we keep doing live classes and, and so forth. Is this good for those that don't know stock lingo? I need basic beginner help. Yeah, Valencia, this is, this is really the place for you. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you've come to the right place, no doubt. We have people that are just starting. And, and look, I mean, when you start, that's when you need the education. It's not, when, it's not after you blow up your account. I mean, a lot of people join after they blow up their account because they tried doing it and they weren't able to do it successfully. And, you know, they're trying to get education now. So, but don't do that. You know, don't wait until you're down 50, 80% on your account. I have those conversations quite often with, with retail traders. And, you know, there comes a moment in time where you just have to, you know, admit it that you need help, right? It, it's not, not everybody can figure it out on their own. That's nothing wrong with that, right? But if you, if you can acknowledge that, if your P&L is, is telling you that, right? If your trades are not as good as you would want them to be, then maybe it's time to try to learn from a professional, right? Uh, no, we don't, Drew. You're welcome, Adam. You're welcome, Adam. Um, okay. How do you find stocks to read their charts? Benzinga Pro, Jamie, and I'm going to go over that in a few. And Benzinga Pro is included in the trading school, if you're asking. Um, um, Wilbert, so we opened the enrollment today to the trading school. So you guys are able to join today. We we're um, so we opened the enrollment basically starting today, right? So you guys can join, right, um, as, as new students. So you are able to join. Yes, we did, we did open the enrollment period. The news is inside Benzinga Pro as well. And you can talk about it on the trading school. I mean, I'll show you how I use it. Um, Abdul platform, we're using Benzinga Pro, okay? You're welcome, Essa. Yeah, it's a, it was a great presentation. Absolutely great. Mark did a great job. Um, yeah, Trevor. Yep. Correct. Yeah, oh, you're welcome, Mona. Um, it comes with Benzinga Pro Essential, Wilfred. So the trading school has Benzinga Pro Essential. It doesn't have the basic. Each class. Okay, I'm going to go over this uh, with you guys. The class begins at 7 in the morning. Everything is Eastern time, okay? 7 a.m. to 7.45 lecture. 7.45 to 9, you have the lecture review. This is not written in stone. Like, you, you, if it needs to be extended, it's extended. It all depends on questions you guys have and participation. And then you have a break. You know, if you want to trade in between, you can do that. We have trading chat rooms and, and we have, you know, education chat rooms inside the trading school where you can go and do that, right? In your, like a lounge chat room. Um, so you can do that in between until we meet again at 12 noon. And that is when we do a full market overview, a full recap of the lesson. You know, you have any questions, you have more than enough places to, to ask them and, and get a response. And if that's not enough, you still can get office hours with Mark office hours and all that is recorded and uploaded to the portal so that if you, if you, didn't need, let's say you didn't want to get the office hours or you didn't want to attend the Q and A's, they're still there for you. They're still there for you. So if you got a couple hours spare, it never hurts to, to educate yourself to become a better trader. I guarantee you're gonna, gonna learn at least, you know, at least two, three things on each lesson. There's just always someone else with another question that you didn't think about that it just, you, you just think like, wow, that's a good question. And I like the answer. That makes sense. So we all learn together as a community. You know, that's part of the benefits. It's part of the benefits. Um, Adam, the laptop, it's a new Google Chromebook. You, we will send it out after the seven-day money-back guarantee period. All right. Um, you're welcome, Siobhan. You're welcome. It was a great, yes, great session today, for sure. Um, David, you, David, send me an email, okay, so that we can work this out for you. If you already have Benzinga Pro, send me an email and we'll work something out uh, because the trading school does come with Benzinga Pro. 
uh, Valencia, do you recommend the dollar amount to have to start investing? No, I don't. I don't. I mean, it's it's up to your personal situation. Everybody has a different, you know, financial situation. I'll drop the email there. Hold up. But I'll definitely tell you the best time to start investing is now. The, but no, actually, the best time to start investing is like a long time ago. So if you're asking yourself the question, is it the time to start investing? Well, I mean, you're not late, but you could have done a lot better if you would have started earlier. So the sooner, the better. This is what I'm trying to emphasize. This education is going to build on top of other education, and you're going to keep building on these blocks. And that way, you're going to become a better trader. You're going to start understanding not just the, the lingo that'll come. Don't worry about that. You need to actually understand like the concepts. Once you understand the concepts, you can break it down. Like you know, like at least that's how I break it down. You know, you talk about the concepts that we're discussing in the trading school, and then from there you break it down. What does that concept entail? Okay, and then you break it down, and you break it down, and you go granular on things. You know, this is just a tip for for like maybe getting a, a new concept, right? Obviously, you guys are very, you know, you guys are spoiled that you guys have a full uh, an instructor who's a former hedge fund manager. You get Benzinga Pro, you get the chat rooms for trading, the education, the replays, the Q and A's, the classes Monday to Friday. This is out of this world. Like when I started, there was nothing even close to this. It was wing it or or wing it. You know, it wasn't much out there. So, you guys being able to have this available is awesome. You might not even know it because you just started trading and you're just figuring things out. But like, I'm telling you, this is the best way to start trading. If you are, if you are interested in investing or swing trading or day trading or options or crypto, whatever it is, it, like, it's good that you came into the markets, but don't let the hype be the reason why you came into the markets. So come for the hype but stay for the responsible trading and the responsible, um, you know, trading in general. Okay. Um, David. Yeah. I put the email down there. All right, James. Yeah. I think I put the email down there. Did I, is it there? Oh, yeah, it's there. Valencia. You're awesome too. I'm glad you enjoyed the session. It was very fun, engaging. I'm glad you guys participated. If you think you had fun today, wait till you get into the trading school. <laughs> all right david okay um and let's just make sure nobody here on youtube has more questions all right adam you got your answer on the laptop steve no worries man sorry if you answered this um yes you can you can do that steve stevie so once you enroll in the classes you are able to take the classes again that is correct during the entire year there's no limit on how many times you can take it Unlike other places, you can take these classes as many times as you want, um, you know, with an instructor and we have office hours, you know, full support. Nobody gets left behind. Like that's, that's, that's dead on with really what we're trying to do here. We want you guys to become smart, profitable traders. That's it. That's very nice of us. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. James, it's Mark. Mark is the instructor. The former hedge fund manager who traded with 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 Cohen and Jabelli and all these guys, um, that's the instructor, Mark. It's pretty awesome. That is your instructor. Like, I mean, this is what I'm saying. You guys don't. Some of you guys don't know it, but like, you are just getting spoiled. Like, this is true spoiling to the max. This is max spoiling. But it's good because you guys are going to have a better advantage. I'm glad you guys are taking that leap and starting to trade and invest. But do it responsibly. Doing do it with the right community and do it with the right tools, which is why you have. It's like a pro. Um, so I'm going to go over pro really quick here. All right. You guys know the trading school. If anybody has questions on this platform, let me know in the Zoom chat um, or, the, you know, the, uh, the YouTube one. Yeah, you're welcome, David. You're welcome, Samson. Samson Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, Samson, send me an email, okay? Yeah, tell your coworkers, man. Like this is a lot of people do that. A lot of people come in with their friends. You know, they come husband and wife, or you know, two guys, two friends, learning how to trade. It's normal. I mean, it's okay to trade, learn from a professional. There's nothing wrong with learning from a professional. There, there is something wrong trying to learn from Reddit. Like there is one million percent things wrong there. 
Okay, so I put the email for you. So basically, this is the trading school. As you can see there, you have all the lessons. Um, they're all labeled. You see office hours. Okay, momentum, all the classes are there. Q&A momentum, chart patterns. Uh, Siobhan, the laptop's going to be emailed. It's going to be sent seven days after the date of sign up. So you sign up today, seven days from today. Um, we'll be sending that to you. These are the classes, guys, investment strategy and trading systems, market principles. These are from October 20th. Obviously, I'm going back in time. This is the live class. We don't have a live class right now, so obviously there's nothing here. But there's a there's a chat here on the right side where you see that blank space, and it's so it gets activated once the class begins. All right. Video library. You see where I click there in the bar? Video library. This is where you have all of the recordings, everything. I know someone was asking, can I go, um, can I go look at the prior recordings? You can do that there. Everything, the Q and A's. The investment psychology is by far my favorite class. So this is a sneak peek of one of the classes. All right, take a look. Investment styles. Remember, this is education coming from somebody who, a, a real money manager. This is done by somebody who's been in the game with the biggest. There's nobody better than Cohen or Jabelli. Those guys are like, you can posterize them. They're definitely at that level. So Mark Petrino having that experience there, you know, he, ha he he's giving you all the insights. He's giving you all the educations and, you know, hedge funds, you know, they're really tight with the info and the education they gave their hedge fund managers and traders. So um, being able to, you guys get this already digested and filtered through Mark. Um, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. I'm telling you, you guys are getting spoiled. I mean, full on research here, analysis of stocks. And this is the class uh, strategies. So, you know, you're setting up your own strategies there and I'm PayPal right there four months ago. I mean, we're already talking about PayPal here. Like, I, I mean, I randomly brought up this ticker. We're already talking about it. So this is obviously, you're only looking at the chart, but in the real, like in the live class, there's an actual chat on the side. Um, and then you have the chat rooms, all right? You guys know the chat rooms. If you want to go straight to pro, which pro is included in the trading school, all you got to do is click on this button pro. It's going to take you there. I already have it open. And this is just a quick session that I'm going to do with you guys so that you can take a look uh, at a couple of ways that we can use pro, right? So once you get into the trading school, you get your trade ideas from pro, and then you take them to the trading school. You go to the trading tab, you know, and you put in, you know, the ticker, Hey, PayPal, PayPal, good for entry you know whatever it is you have a full community of people ready to help you you know re ready to join you in your in any questions that you have basically so if you if you have if you feel that you need help uh, there are tons of great people there that are going to help you out there not just mark it's a great community is what i'm saying so this is the basic details tab uh, we have apple here we can put whatever uh, we can put facebook and doesn't matter meta platform and in this details tab basically i mean you're, it's your normal chart right price action volume really all i need i want to throw an indicator there it's the only one that i use to be honest from my conversation with money managers it seems to be um reliable and it's pretty pretty simple basic to understand so all right this is the indicator this is the rsi right there so these are all the settings if you do want to edit the indicators um i want to change the color and i want to make this easier to see for me so i change it to the color white because it, it just you know it's easier to spot there in the charts and then you can look easy, easily you can look at, you know, this bounce on the RSI right here. Yep, chart's going lower, but the RSI is giving you a different signal. I mean, the, you can use the RSI to make so many different types of trades, guys. Um, but, you know, this is what we're doing in the trading school. So this is the chart, right? You can put your indicators there. You can you can draw lines if you, if you need to.
So all of your charting, all that, you can do it there in Pro. Um, yeah, Siobhan, we'll send it over. Jared, after my year is up, can I still access the classes? If yeah, if I mean if you decide to stay with the with the community, then yes. It's only for active members, pretty much. So we have a um we have a lot of tools out there for you guys, not just in pro, um, but in the trading school itself, a lot of upgrades that are coming. I can't tell you all, you know, all of them, but I can tell you there's a lot coming. There's a lot coming, it's gonna get better. It's only getting started. So if you continue to be a member of the trading school. Jared, you will continue to have access to pro and the classes and the lesson and everything that we're doing there. So this is the basic deep chart, guys. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go here to overview. This is where I get a no an overview of the company itself. And you have all of the news, right? Remember, Benzinga is among many things, but financial media would be good a good you know, way to describe it. Um, so we have all of the connections with the publishers, all the research companies, all the all of these uh, companies that are basically publishing news on behalf of companies, and that's something that we do as well that I'll cover in a bit. But basically, you get all of the news. I've used different brokerages. I'm not going to name them, but many times I'm looking at a stock ripping, and there's no news on it. And then I have to go to my Benzinga Pro, and then I see that in Pro the news was there days ago. And then you'll also see articles that are hundreds of editors write. So it definitely you're in the zone you're in the game when you're using pro no doubt um, obviously you have your financials here your key ratios company industry peers another trade idea right there you're surrounded by trade ideas guys okay i'm showing you right here peers you can just look at their competitors easy easy money guys um, you have earnings information balance sheet ownership shareholder equity like these two right below are very very good because before when i started trading and i didn't use pro i had about probably 20 30 tabs open and each one was to look at something different and with pro i really just do everything like in one site and it saves me time and at this point you should already know that time is money so that's what we're trying to do here save you time make you money and right here, you have a brief description of the company. This is great for day traders or swing traders if you just want to take a quick look at what the company does. If, if, you, if you see it in one of our scanners, our proprietary scanners that are the only ones that you can see news pre-market and after-market, we aggregate data during those sessions. Nobody else does. So that you can actually trade pre-market when everybody else is waiting till 9.30 for their scanners to, to turn on. and there's once it turns on, it's only aggregating the data from the prior regular day. So it's it's if you want to be a successful trader and you are starting to scan the markets at 930, even though they open at four in the morning, you need to step up your game. Point blank, you just do. You have to invest in the right tools. Period. That's just how it is. So yeah, you, if, if you're swing trading or day trading, you can look at the description of the company there. And below, you have the link if you want to go to that company's website and get a little bit of a deeper dive. If you want to do research, this is the tool for you. Research for short trade for short term trade ideas and for investments as well. I have two accounts. I have trade options and I have a long term account for long for long term investments. And I use Pro for all of my research for everything for a swing trade or for a short trade, and and all of the tools are there. Um, uh, Dajana, the, the, okay. So if you get the deal today, basically you keep that discount for life. So next year you're going to keep the 70% off. So you, you keep paying, you know, the same, you'll have that discount for life. If that makes sense every year. Um, Paul is asking, do any of the classes cover momentum trading? Yeah, they do. We actually have a class named momentum and that's where, so that's a strategy that I use for, for trading options. I trade momentum. And I use the charts to my advantage. So it's a mix of everything. I use a mix of fundamentals, I use a mix of news, I guess, or market themes, and then a combination of technicals with price patterns. And but all of this stuff comes together once you, you know, if you take the trading school for a year, you're, you're this will come naturally to you. It's going to be like it all comes in one, you know, it, it's all going to come in one piece when you're looking to take a trade. And it's not going to be, you know, right away, but 
that's why you have all the courses and the classes so that you can kind of align yourself. It's like when you go to become to school to become a doctor, right? You're taking all the classes because all the classes are going to be beneficial to you being a successful doctor. It's the same thing for trading. You're taking all the classes because they're all going to help you become a, a more successful trader. So every class has a, has a great point, a great lesson to it. You're welcome. Um, yeah. All right. So this is the details tab. This is the insiders tool that we just put out. So shout out to uh, all the coders and developers that work on this. So you see here, and I put a chart there on the side. You can actually have different, um, different, you know, different tools inside the same workstation. So here you can see multiple insider buys. So this tells you that there are multiple directors, multiple people in that company that are buying stock. So this means that the CEO is buying stock, the CFO, the, the chief marketing officer, you know, the, the, the VP of sales, the director of this, the director of that, the manager of that. So basically when you have a lot of people in the company buying the stock at once, I mean, that's a huge, huge, like bullish sentiment for me. When I see everybody in the stock going long, like every director, everybody going long, that is pretty bullish to me. So this is a great place where you can get trade ideas. And I actually do this. I'm giving you guys some of my uh, setups. Like these are some of the setups that I trade. These are tools that you can change to whatever you want to trade. But this is just an example of how I use it. And maybe how either you want to use it or you can customize it or whatnot. But th this is just a general feeling. Um, So yes, you have a lot of people buying there and you're like, okay, so we gather all this data. We have all these SEC filings and it's a bunch of paperwork. And what we do is that we summarize that through our technology here, basically give you the top of the top. So we scan through all of the SEC filings, find the ones where we see multiple directors, multiple VPs and, 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 see, and you know chair positions buying the stock. And then we accumulate that data and bring it to you here in that chart by order of size. This is very helpful, guys. These are like trade ideas, like spoon fed to you. If you don't, I mean, this is hand holding to the max. So that's one type of chart you have there. That's the first one. The second one below is insider purchases. It's, you know, when you see a big purchase from one individual, the one from above is multiple individuals. And it gives you the percentage that they own, the quantity they're buying, the price. Um, this gives you the same thing, you know, who's buying in the company, but only for penny stocks. A lot of you guys love penny stocks, including myself, including Mark. We all love those low float, small cap stocks um, for trades. So there you go. You have a good reason right there. But obviously, you need to look a little bit further into that. So you can see they own 4.16% after that quantity purchase. So some pretty good data. And then you have the opposite. Insider sales above 100 grand. If you're looking for good trade ideas, this would be a good trade idea on the short side. People that are selling over a hundred grand. I mean, obviously, this doesn't mean you got to go short it. This means that this could be a good place to start to find trade ideas. Okay, it's all about doing your research and going through the motions, doing the right analysis. But where do you start? This would be a good place to start. Um, so this is one tool. I'm just giving you one tool. If that's not enough, there's a lot more. So, yeah, yes, Marth Martha's hand holding to the max. Like this is. True handholding. We're never going to let go. <laughs> the course Tuesday is for a year. Obviously, you know, it's rolling. We don't finish. We don't stop. But um, the actual subscription is for a year, if that makes sense. All right. Um, how do you get? All right. Let's go to some questions here. Yeah, you get alert. Well, we, we have the trading room, which has only Mark's trade ideas. So, so yeah, that's where all of his trade ideas are. It's not like if you don't get it that right second, it's not valid. Like, as you can see, we were talking about Twilio, um, FedEx, Carnival Cruise Lines, so many other stocks. And we have tons of stocks that we go over during every lesson. Like the education is on actual stocks. This is not education like, read, like reading a, a textbook. We're going through the lessons, applying it to the current market, to the current stocks in the market. So you will get trade ideas, you know, like it or not, via education. 
Now, if you want to take action on them, you know, that's a diff- that's another approach as well. Doesn't, you know, you, you can still do that. Um, so yes, Jennifer, Mark's trade recommendations are included with the trading school. That's what you're getting and more. Um, Joel, Joe, try it, try it, man. Try it. You really have nothing to lose. You get all your money back. I mean, what more do you want? Really? There's not a lot of places that do money back guarantee, Joe. So, you know, try it seven days. If you don't like it, get all your money back. Give it a try. You know, you know, you have to give yourself a chance. You have to give yourself a chance. Why? Because institutions spend millions of dollars, millions and millions of dollars in research and data. And if you are not equipping yourself with, with Benzinga Pro or, or, you know, trading with the right community, you are already at a disadvantage. Like if you would not already be at a disadvantage as a retail trader. So disadvantage over disadvantage over disadvantage. And then you wonder why the trades don't work. You know, it comes a point where you have to realize and face the facts that, okay, if you, if you want to be successful in trading, there are some tools that you need so that you're not trading with all of the information that everybody else has. Because if you're trading what, what everybody else is trading, what's your edge? You don't have an edge. And you need one in this market. You need to have multiple edges. And Pro gives you multiple edges. So you, you need to be able to have data that, I mean that not everybody else would have or, or just packaged differently where you can view it and analyze it and find patterns and all that. So Pro will give you the option to do that. If you want to customize all these things, you can do that. So I would definitely try it, Joe. Um, new topic discussed daily or in depth for a week. Suzanne, um, what's up, Suzanne? So, so we have eight chapters. Monday to Thursday, you go over one chapter each. Friday, you have a recap. Now. By in depth, we go in depth in every chapter, and because we're going over lessons, so you know we're there's not willy nilly like you know just read this slide. We're going over lessons. We're going over actual like lessons for trading, and we apply that lesson as we are showing it to you guys with the current charts. Okay, so so yes, that's your answer right there. And as you can see, the calendar, if you want to use the calendar for, yep, you got it, Suzanne. So I have my conference calls here on my calendar, and you can either change it by analyst ratings, dividends, earnings, economics, FDA calendar, guidance, IPOs, M&As, real estate, SEC filings. So this is the calendar. This is another tool that you can use to find trade ideas. So if you already have Pro, you, you just want to keep your Pro, this is good for you. But if you want to, you know, join the community and learn how to trade with Mark and all that and get pro, you know, you can join as well. And if you want pro and want to join the trading school, we can also help you get in. So this is the basic chart. I already showed you guys this. This is the scanner. This is this is the only scanner open pre-market and aftermarket. I'm just going to go over this really quick with you guys. You have the gainers there. Okay. You can select gainers and losers or just gainers or losers. You click gainers, you select pre-market, you click session. Select the sectors that you want to trade. I want to do con- communication services and consumer staples. And then I want to limit the market cap of what I'm trading. Max to bill market cap. And then something that's under 10 bucks. All right. So you're going to have all these trade ideas that you're going to be trading in the pre-market session before anybody else even has their scanners open. So you can customize this more if you want. Um, Then we have the signals tab. You have price signals. It shows spikes in price. Then you have the unusual options activity there. That's not included in the trading school, but I'm just showing it to you. Um, Block trades. This is where we cover dark pool trades. If you do want to check that, it gives you all the big, big orders, like multi-million dollar orders. Um, so you can filter all of this by your watch list, just like everything else I showed you halts. You can also look at all the stocks that are being halted on the way up or down opening gaps. So stocks that are gapping up in the morning, and then you have highs and lows, and you can filter this by 52 week highs or 52 week lows. You can put session high or day high. I mean, you can filter this to day trade or to go long. You can filter it as, as however you want, which with whatever strategy that you want. 
And then lastly, I want to show you here Benzinga exclusives. So this is the news that we break. There are companies that come to Benzinga because they want to reach you, the retail trader. They want to get their message sent out as clear as possible on what they're trying to do as a company to inform their shareholders. So if they come to Benzinga and, and then we release the news, we break the news, okay? We're the source of the news. And you can see here, all of these are Benzinga exclusives. And when we release the news, if you have Benzinga Pro, you get it immediately. If you have another brokerage, it's very likely it could take longer um, just because of the transfer of data and all that. But as a pro member, you get it right away. And I'm just going to show you a couple of stocks that we did exclusives with really quick. Let's go to my main tab here. Okay, this is one that we did, Alfie. I don't know if you know Alfie. Yeah, options, unusual options activity is not included. Yep. So Alfie PR came out around three bucks or something like that, like in this range. The stock went all the way up to $21, $22. If this is not good enough for you, I don't know what is. Okay. That's when we release the news, when Benzinga breaks the news. Let me show you another one. I know you guys know these tickers. BBIG. If you don't remember the stock, I do. We had a PR with them literally like when it was a, a dollar or two and it went all the way up to 12. That's not good enough for you. There's another one that I like, AEHR, PR right there, two bucks, two, three bucks, shoots all the way up to 27, 28. I'm still holding. This is the power of data. It's the power of Benzinga Pro. Okay, now I want you to join the trading school, get these trade ideas and then bring them back, bring them back to the trading school chat room right here. Okay, I showed you how I did a, a quick little, you know, research there to find some stocks. Really, this is, didn't take me more than five to 10 minutes or something like that. So you can come back here with your friends, with your other, uh, you know, students, and you can go over the trades and all that stuff. And if you have questions, you can ask Mark, you can go over Mark's trade ideas here. He's talking about Netflix, and then you can go back to Pro and basically do your research there and you know see your progress if you've improved or not. So I think this has been a very uh, fruitful lesson, guys. I hope you enjoyed the uh, presentation from Mark. I wanted to go over Pro and show you, just give you a couple tips and tricks that I use to find trade ideas and then bring them back to the trading school. And if you guys have questions, feel free to email. There's a, we're going to drop an email in the chat. You can call or email there. The deal expires at midnight. And if you have questions, feel free to reach out, guys. So you're welcome, Jeff. You're welcome, guys. Thanks for being here on a Sunday. It's a pretty productive Sunday, if you ask me. So I had fun. Thanks for being here with us. And uh, we'll be seeing you guys next time. So thanks a lot for joining in. We're going to be uh, closing the stream here in a bit. So thanks guys for being here. I appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the effort you put into educating yourself, for becoming a better trader. So we'll see you guys on the next time. All right. Thanks for being in here and enjoy your weekend. Get ready for Monday. Okay. Appreciate it too. All right, guys.
Thank <laughs> you.